Okay. Because it's going to be like, hey, that's a song by Beck. And it's quite correct. It is a song by Beck. Um, so it's not going to let me do that. And I understand why. So hi, guys. Um, now that I'm back, and also, my, like I said, my laptop camera is screamingly loud because I realized that there's something called Gamma that lets me configure video. Something called Gamma that lets me go, oh, look at that. I can go ahead and do this thing. Post amp backlight compensation. No, I wasn't expecting to be this bright white balance gamma. It should no stop. Why be in a button? There we go. Brightness. There we go. Much, much, much better on all accounts. Yes. There we go. That should be up and running. Let's hope it actually is showing me on live on the proper channel and not just chatting. <sighs> Hi, the small blueberry. How are you doing? Thank you for tuning in. And for the follow, I mean. I'm trying to make sure that I'm in the right category. I don't, I don't think I'll get a ding if I'm in the wrong category. I just don't want to be in the wrong one. It's still showing as OBS just chatting. Oh, of course it is. That's absolutely poopy. Let me switch that to art, guys, so it's on the proper channel. And also... I just want to catch up, guys, on what's going on um, with me while I get this all set up. Tonight, I'm hoping to do the last of my speed run of Baby Yoda. I don't think it will be, but I'm hoping. Uh, I finally found my marker refill, and um, so I can be able to refill the marker that I can use to do most of this. And let me change this really quickly. It's under Channel, Stream Manager. I don't have my internet open on my laptop, and it takes a five-minute process to get that started, so I'm not going to do that. Finishing... Fishing. Come on, phone. <laughs> Finishing Baby Yoda. I got to switch categories from just chatting to art. There we go. Update information. I feel like I've just seen you, the small blueberry. Like, I've, I feel like I know you from another channel. Um, I feel like I've, I've seen you in a friend's channel. I think I may have done. That should say the proper channel in the guy, info guy now, guys now. It should say, um, it should say, um, art, hopefully. I, I, it says just chatting. I'm going to refresh my Twitch and see what happens. It takes about 30 minutes for, 30 seconds for it to kind of refresh anyway. So I'm hoping it's going to be correct. Because again, I don't, I don't think I'll get in trouble. But I just like to make sure all my I's are dotted and all my T's are crossed because I don't want to have anything be an issue. Another person. Hi, Big. How's it going? I know it's the same guy. <laughs> I know it's it's also you, Big. Oh, you're, you're back. Well, wait. I, I were you on the other account before? I, I I I was. I know it was you, Big. I just didn't remember which which Big it was. Yeah, you're on the other one. You were on the other account. Come on, why update, please? Uh, why? <laughs> why do you do this to me? Why are you so brutal? Come on, Twitch. Streaming art with two viewers. Okay, it doesn't say it in the actual description, but it says it on that. So let me get some music running, guys, and that way we can talk. But while I'm getting the music up and running and the reference up and running, I do want to let you know what was going on. This week I had some kind of some, I don't want to say good news, but I had some interesting news. And in that I had probably what I would consider the best scam offer I've ever received. Um, basically they were asking for ambassadors for um, their stuff which isn't a bad thing, except that it wasn't a really good deal. So people, my friends were like, it sounds kind of like a scam. And it could have been a scam. But at the same time, usually I get those, I get scams that are along the lines of, hey, if you buy, you know, if you buy our product, we might share you on our social media, which isn't a really good deal. The one I had recently was, um, you know, if you share it, if you buy one of our pieces at cost, we will, we will share you on our social media and offer you a 10% discount for all a 10% discount code that's for you and your followers that they can use and you get 15% off 15% of all the sales made so I'm like so I'm getting a cut kickback plus people buying it get a discount plus I get your merchandise and um, I get your merchandise at cost and so it was, a, it was a pretty good deal except it's not as good as it could be in other words it's sh they should be paying me for my endorsement not paying me by saying you can have the stuff at cost and 
uh, you get what you buy, what people set by. So it was, it, again, I, I took it very optimistic. Like this is still the best offer I've ever received. I followed you from Russell Discord server. You probably see me from his stream. Probably that's what it was. Cause I, I don't get a chance to watch Russell very much, but I try to look on his stream quite a bit. Uh, Cause he does some oh, amazingly beautiful stuff. And I think today was the first day I actually posted in Russell's stream that I was broadcasting. I found a lot of folks have found me by going to other people's discords because they have a discord channel just for, hey, I'm broadcasting, check me out. And some people don't, and I get that. But I'm also glad that people have those things because they work out pretty good. Because again, I, I like I like finding like-minded folks. And by the way, I'm sorry, I'm not to switch to my, my main cam because what's, what's going on here is I'm filming a live version of me working on Baby Yoda. As you can see, I'm going to do a big camera seat so you can see, guys. This is why I'm filming it. So I'm taking the VODs from this, downloading the VODs, and I'm going to take them, edit them, and speed them up so I can get my speed drawing from it. But while we're in this gap here, this is a perfect time for me to refill my Copic 1, my W1. And actually, I might shift Baby Yard just so I don't spill any Copic, because I don't think you can see it on camera. Yeah, I won't be able to see it on camera. But I was going to show you how I refill them, but I'll do that in a different video, I suppose. But I'll still be able to see you guys' chat, even though it won't be on the screen. I have my camera up so I can see what people are, you know, if people are typing. But yeah, um, so yeah, I think that's where I saw you before, now that you say it, Small Blueberry. I've, I've, oh, thank you. <laughs> um, I'm gonna take a little moment to boast. If you, if this is your first time here, I'm sorry to boast a little bit, but um, I've, I'm an artist. I've been painting and drawing for about, oh, I'd say I'm about 40 now, so most of my life. Um, you know, I went to college, Greenville Tech, um, you know, fine arts focus, uh, started getting more into like marker illustration because of, I work in a call center and it's easier to have those paints, but I'm a traditionally a, a, a painter with traditional like oil paints, watercolor, um, acrylic. I, I started with acrylic in my teens. Um, but markers tend to be very easy cause you can just cap them off. The Copics allow you to blend. Uh, this year I was in, I entered in the Copic art contest and, um, got to the, fi the finals, which is the furthest I've ever gotten with any contest, I think. Um, so I got to the, the finals and a lot of folks were loved my drawing very much. And I was very proud of it too. Um, but the Copic markers just give me the chance to kind of blend stuff without actually being, um, you know, without making too much of a mess, you know, I could actually, you know, cap it off and be good. And then leaked a little bit of the alcohol because it's an alcohol based marker. So it does dissolve itself a little bit. So you can blend even after it's a little bit dry. All right, let me pull up the reference. Um, there it is, Baby Yoda. Here we go. My goal is, I, I started this uh, last Tuesday, the Tuesday before. No, it was last Tuesday, I think. I, I did, yeah, this is my third stream of it. And honestly, I wanted it to be done in one stream or even two, but three kind of happened. So I'm like, oof, but you know, we'll, we'll go. We're going to go with it. <laughs> so what, what do you, um, if you don't mind me asking, do you do art too, Small Blueberry? Because I watch a lot of streams that I'm not necessarily able to do what the streamer does. <laughs> like I watch a lot of streams and I'm like, oh, that's kind of cool how they do this thing. I'm interested in said thing, but I don't know. I don't know if I can do it. So, but I've also seen a lot of people are actually, oh, that's way better marker. I've also seen a lot of folks that join art streams that are artists themselves. And I think I was actually shocked when I started getting into Twitch, how many people are actually artists that watch other artists. I know I do, but I didn't realize how many other people were, you know, a lot of folks are, they're like me, you know, <laughs> they're like, Oh, I stream, I do art, and I'm watching too. So it's kind of cool how many people are actually, you know, and are, you know, also in that same kind of boat. Oh, hi. Hello, Dance Christine, right? Dance Christine, how are you? I was, I know, I know who you are. You do a lot of art. Do you have any art you, can, you feel free to share? Um, I think you should be able to share it. I think I've disabled the link bot as long as it's safe for work. You know, nothing, not, nothing, not safe for work, but you're free to share a link of any, if you've got a work, a, a piece you're particularly proud of, you know, definitely share that in the stream. Again, I just asked safe for work links, safe for work links only. And dance Christine, how are you? I was, <laughs> I don't think we've, I mean, I've talked to you dance Christine through, um, Debbie's channel, but I didn't know if you do art as well. I can't remember if, if that came up in Debbie's channel. If I remember the answer to that question. 
Um, also, if you guys tuned in last week, you remember the saga of the paper being super wet? I was trying to correct that with a my dehumidifier, but unfortunately it seems like my dehumidifier is kind of busted right now. So I wasn't able to get a lot of the moisture out of the air, sadly enough. So we're gonna have to just do what we can about moving around the drawing and not letting it get too the paper get too soaked. I cannot fix it. We're gonna get a new dehumidifier soon, but right now it's not in the cards and we have to figure that out. I'm okay, how, how are you? I'm doing pretty good. Um, it's been a pretty chill day. My only sad thing, my only sad part was I've, I haven't had much of a chance to really lurk on a lot of my friends today. I lurked on a few before I jumped on, but I knew with tonight being streamed on, I was like, ah, oh, I gotta peek in. And um, I think you, if you were there when I, um, hey, how's it going, Pink Devil? Yes, lurks are love. And I, see what it says? I have, your company will be missed, but your presence is appreciated. Lurks are always love. I never understood. I, I This pandemic has taught me all about, like, um, how to how to twitch like how to actually be a good twitch person um so i really appreciate that pink devil pink devil does a lot of uh, i don't know if you're gonna be doing art or gaming when you get up and running but he does both um i mean sorry pink devil does both um both sides of the spectrum which is pretty awesome and amazing art so far that i've seen nothing publicly shared yet but we're friends i've been trying to get back into art watching twitch is giving me a boost in motivation yes for me too um real talk here I have been, not have been, but I, I was in and working myself out of a major, major rut. Like, not a creative rut so much as just a a COVID-induced, um, whoops, sorry guys, there's a lot of loud noise, a COVID-induced uh, funk, I guess is a better way to put it. I was going to say depression, but I was like, oh, it was way to beyond, beyond depression, I feel like. But I, and I know it was pretty common. A lot of folks had it. It wasn't. It wasn't every artist that had it, and it wasn't like it was exclusive to me. A lot of good folks had it. And, you know, a lot of folks couldn't afford the time off, and so they kept working throughout the entire pandemic. And then there are folks like me that didn't have any specific projects. It was just my own self-improvement. And so I had nobody waiting on anything I was doing. So that gave me a reason to kind of just back off for a while. So for like all of the pandemic, I pretty much played video games. <laughs> But at the same time, it also gave me an impetus to want to go back to streaming, even if I just streamed video games. And um, so it kind of did kind of rebuild stuff for me. So I can understand how that would be because I, I started, like I said, started about by going back into the gaming side of things and then rebuilding, watching more Twitch streams that were gaming. And then my friend, she went from my coworker to my stream friend. <laughs> Um, which was kind of fun that she went from that in that direction, especially since she had zero experience streaming. And then she's like my coach and mentor on streaming because <laughs> I took a break and you know, the pandemic didn't help it either. And then, um, cause all the stress from that, I'm not saying, you know, something specifically COVID related, but obviously the stress of that, um, kind of compounded other socialization things. Um, but I hope you can find the, the strength again, um, Christine. I really do. Like, I feel like it's not, again, I don't blame COVID, the little virus for this, but the malaise that's been created from the vacancy in our lives, the shift. We, and I've said this before, but we as human creatures don't like change. Change often can herald improvement, but we as human creatures resist it even if it does mean improvement, we just always do. It's just a bad, bad thing. We don't like change. We never, like I said, we don't. It's, we resist it. We rail against it. Everything in our powers we can do to avoid change, we will do. That line's a little bit too dark to use my needed eraser, so I'm switching to my, um, to my white eraser. Oh, this white eraser is really good. At it, it doesn't destroy the paper's surface very much, but really can get out those stubborn pencil stains. Hmm. <laughs> Stubborn pencil stains. I don't know, it just sound like, to me, the pencil stains the paper. So I always think about it as a pencil stain. Did you say grime? No. <laughs> yeah, I hope so too. I think the important thing is don't put pressure on yourself. Like, I've, and this is something I've talked about too in, on, on my Facebook page, not my art Facebook page, my personal one though, is when people say, oh, I, I didn't do anything, I didn't do anything, or um, I'm not busy. Everyone right now is busy. Everyone's busy. Um, even if you're just sitting at home watching Netflix in your PJs, you're 
busy doing something. You're sitting on your couch watching TV. So you're engaging your eyes, you're engaging your ears, you know, you're, you're, if, even if you're just like sitting at home eating chips, you're eating, your body's digesting on a passive level, you're doing something. The problem is we don't place much value on that. So we feel like, oh, I didn't do anything all day. I wasn't busy at all. Yes, you were. You just chose a different style of busy. And I think we put too much emphasis on being valuably busy. I totally get the standing. Yeah, it does. You have to kind of work it out. And sometimes the needed eraser is just enough to knock off that little bit of the, because uh, it gets caught in the tooth of the, the little fibers, the tooth of the paper, so to speak. Well, not the tooth. Well, sometimes the tooth. I think the tooth is like the pits and the um, the fibers will catch it too. So the, the goal is you want to get some of those, either the fibers lifted off or cleanse the fibers off the top of it. And sometimes it's not easy. Come on, turn off that reference. Come on. There we go. Okay, there is definitely a grayer line. So what's come? What C is this one? C three. Let's try C three on this edge here. But um, so we're all busy. But the problem is, I think we put ourselves too much on the spot to be. Um, what's the word I'm looking for? Productive. You know, we have to be productive. Do something important and significant. And now with all that's going on in the world, it's even more hard to do that. Right now I have a one dollar lead pencil that works compared to other lead <laughs> pencils I have. You know what the thing is? It's true though. Like I think a lot of folks have put emphasis and this has been a kind of meme in like especially in the comic book industry. Um not directly with me, but obviously being around folks in the comic book industry as artists and as fans, there's a huge emphasis on, you know, hey bro, what 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 pencil do you use? What uh, what paper do you use? And the, the number one response is the paper's only as good as the artist holding it. And it's true. I mean, you want to have tools that, feel, that are reliable and also that um, you want to have reliable tools and consistent tools and tools that feel good for you to use. You don't have to worry about what everybody else is using, but obviously it helps to kind of see what certain things can go to a certain style, but there's no magic pen. Like, um, you know, sometimes the best tools are the cheapest tools because if they feel the best in your hands, then that's the way to go. Um, and it's not about the expense. But the only reason I went to Copic Marker was because I tried, I had a collection of Prismas from college and the Prismas were staining the paper in weird ways. I would mix black with the colorless blender and get purple. And I should have got light gray. And all I would get is this weird lavender purple. And I'm like, no, I don't want to mix, you know, black and clear and get purple. You know, when you have that kind of unreliable color mixing, it kind of turns you off of um, using that particular medium. So... I just said, you know what? I'm not even going to mess with this. I'm going to switch back to a different company. And for the most part, it's been Copic. Copic has, um, Copic markers tend to be a little less unpredictable about any kind of chemical interactions between different shades. So that's one of the reasons I switched to Copic because I can mix two colors that are supposed to look like they blend together and they blend together rather than make a weird chemical reaction like I got with the, the, um, the uh, we had two as well, the W2 with the um, like Prisma colors because the Prismas were pretty good for me. I mean, they worked great for me in college, they worked for me good for me for a while. But the minute I started doing some colorless blending, it worked okay. But then I would get, like I said, these really weird color interactions that didn't make any sense, like black turning a lavender shade, bleeding lavender. I just bought a black Copic actually, yeah, they're pretty decent. Um, yes, the person, it's the person that manipulates the media. Exactly. Cause I've, like I said, you, you, there's, I'm sure you can find videos of great artists taking the most garbagey tool and making beautiful art with it. Cause it's all about the mark making. Like if you can make a beautiful mark, it doesn't matter what tool you're using. It will, it will still look good. You know, now granted certain tools. I mean, if you take mud and a stick, it's not gonna look fantastic, but at the same time, um, <laughs> it's, if you if you utilize what you can with it and you know embrace the material for what it is you might be able to make fantastic results with it because again it's all in the mark you're trying to make not in the tool and that that comes from the hand it comes from the arm it comes from the wrist um if you notice a lot of my motions are very flowing and also too my curvature is what i call it, it's, it's a rainbow so if you make all your curves do this where the arc goes outward never draw like a upside down horseshoe Draw a rainbow. All your curves should follow the rainbow curve. 
Where's a good place to get a Copic markers for a great deal? I get this question a lot, believe it or not. To be fair, this collection of Copics you see before you is about nine years of collecting. <laughs> so what I did was I started off with very basic set. I started off with one, uh, W1, W3, and W5. One, three, and I don't have five handy, do I? Boom, 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 boom. Where's five? I mean, I think you get the idea if I don't find five, but I'd rather have it in front of me. But I mean, like this collection here, this probably would have taken me about seven or eight months of collecting right here. That much. So, I mean, we're talking years of collecting these. So what I usually do is I usually buy them on sale. Most places have them like, I, uh, and I know folks may have objections to this, but, and I, 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 I shop there sometimes, but, and I understand if you do, and I'm not, I'm not saying it's bad or good. Um, I would buy, I bought markers at Hobby Lobby when they have a 40% off coupon. Here's four, but where's five? Um, so I'll oftentimes will buy markers that are, you know, I'll buy one or two with a 40% off coupon. Michaels will carry them. Um, my local art supply store sometimes ha now has them. Um, used to be conventions used to get them pretty cheap, but I think conventions got wise and now they don't sell them for good deals anymore. Usually if you're paying about $7 for one of these, no, no, Dance Christine, you're totally fine. I only said that as a joking moment because honestly, I would rather a be asked a question 15 times and have the answer than be asked once and be caught flat footed. <laughs> I'm just saying that don't worry about, you know, don't, it's, it's a very common question. And I, I would have the same question too. Cause I'm, I would see this collection and be like, man, this guy must be rich. No, I'm just very, I <laughs> collected this over the course of, like I guess my first Copic piece was I think it was in 2012. And um, if you forgive a brief moment of boasting, which isn't really boasting, it's more like a factual, I'm trying to find my F, my W5 so I can show you, but I can't find W5, so we're just gonna cut it short, but I basically started with cool grays one, three, and five, and warm grays one, three, and five. Oh, there's one right in front of my face. But this was the first, these are the ones I start off with right here. These are the oldest ones in my collection. One, three, five, just those. One, three, and five. And you can build a good range of flesh colors with that. Um, but let me do a quick break here, because we can, because I have a stopping point. So I'm going to do a quick break. You'll be able to see a break because it'll be like, zoink, it'll be a transition. Um, but I did this drawing here in Copic, which has been floating around my studio. This one, the whole reason I did this drawing was because I own cool grays and I own warm grays. But when I bought, when I, before I did this piece, the first, I bought these reds the, and, the, and the light flesh colors, the light, the light ones, which are like E0, E00, E00, triple zero. I had never owned any colors. All I'd owned is the neutral and cool grays. So this whole piece was just to try using the different colors. There was no, let me see if I can get a better, it's a full screen selfie I think is the camera shot. Here we go. But this piece was nothing more than a, a, a test piece. That's all it was to test the new colors. So it's funny cause it's like, I was like, Ooh, wow. It's like, this was literally a test piece to prove I to see how I could use the colors. Thanks, guys. I appreciate the kind words. But um, so it was it, it started off as just simply a um, a test piece to say you know what colors did I have? How would they work together? So I was like, okay, what subject has really dark hair? Because I didn't have a lot of browns. All I had was like the very lightest range of the browns. So I'm like, who's got really pale skin, really dark hair, and ruby red lips? My brain went to D. Devontes, the model, and and dancer. So I was like, perfect. I've always wanted to draw her. <laughs> so I, I didn't have any blonde colors, so I couldn't do Marilyn Monroe. Um, I could have supposed I did, could have done um, Audrey Hepburn. I wish I'd thought of it, but I don't know. I've always, I'd always had wanted to draw um, Dita Von Teese because of the contrast of her. She always wears that classic ruby red 1950s lipstick. So it kind of made sense to, um, you know, to go that route. It was literally just, like I said, just a test piece just for the purpose of saying, hey, what can these colors do? How can I work with these colors? It wasn't anything more fancy or anything. Um, and sometimes it's what you just, just got to do. You've got to explore with the piece, the colors that you've got and see where they take you. Oh, that's a little dark, I think. And yeah, we'll try it. Yeah, it's, it's good. Yeah, that'll be good. Let's 
So that's, I mean, a lot of my pieces are just demonstration pieces or like pieces I came up with like, hmm, I want to test my ability to do X or I want to, I want to practice Y and I, you just go to it. <laughs> can always do Audrey another time. I did do, I haven't done a full actual Audrey sketch or painting. I did an Inktober for one time and Audrey's always been my favorite one. And actually I wanted to, uh, a dispute with my art friend, uh, my cosplay friend, um, Sadie by design. And she'll be like, Marilyn all the way, Marilyn 100% of the way. And I'm like, Mm -mm, Audrey, <laughs> Audrey all the time. And so we go into arguments about who is the better classic beauty. And I'm always like, mm. I've always had, a, I've always been a sucker for short, dark hair. So to me, it's always gonna be Audrey. Not that, again, not that Marilyn Monroe is any kind of a slouch. You know, Marilyn Monroe was, as a as someone who dabbles in photography, I can say that Marilyn Monroe is the photographer's dream. She, um, she knew how to play the camera. She was the, mo she was the photographer's model. She knew exactly what to do on camera. She knew how to foster her image so she looked perfect on camera. Um, and that's why she always looks so radiant and so gorgeous and so seductive in photos because she knew how to do what the camera needed to see to make her, to build her image. A very rare model. There's something going on funny with it. It might be because of the, the um, humidity in the air too. And I thought about going over this with some colored, uh, colored pencil too just to heighten up some stuff. And if that's the case, I might be able to smooth out some of the weirdness, but I'd rather get it all done in Copic first and worry about everything else later. Because you can go over the top with it with colored pencil, but once you touch colored pencil to the Copic, um, never you can't put Copic back to it because the Copic marker will get the dust from the colored pencil and it will corrupt the marker. But I would recommend, as far as like getting a good set, if you can save up money, go ahead and get one of the bigger sets that has like, not the big, big sets, but like I usually, usually they sell the warm grays and the cool grays as like a set of like five or six markers. And I think it's like 30, but if you can get a 40% off coupon, then um, I would say go with it, you know, go with, go ahead and get the bigger sets. But if you can't afford the bigger sets, then buy one marker at a time. Even if it takes you months, you'll, you'll get to it eventually. I mean, like I said, this collection is about seven or eight years. So start off with the colors you think you'll use the most. For me, I bought the warm and cool grays because um, Adam Hughes, he does a lot of like comic book covers and he does that with just warm grays and cool grays. And then he goes into Photoshop, scans it and color, colors it that way. Um, and most of his important covers are all, all in black and white, basically, but not black and white, but no, sepia and the cool grays. And it's been amazing how many times um, sepia colors and the cool grays actually pay off. Um, meaning there's been times I've been like, oh, you know, this will work, this won't work for this. And it's totally worked. Um, like for example, I did a drawing of Gal Gadot's version of Wonder Woman as a commission. This marker is probably dry, isn't it? Yeah, it's pretty dry. But the commission I did was of Gal Gadot's Wonder Woman and the Flash, the, um, the new Flash guy. I can't remember the actor's name, Eli something, I think. And, um... Okay, never mind. It refills in the other bag. But the um, her skirt is blue. Wonder Woman's like the the warrior skirt she wears is blue. But the thing is, I really didn't use that much blue in it. the The actual color I used for it was actually the cool grays, <laughs> because in the drawing, that cool gray red is blue. Thank you for sharing. I work at a Japanese bookstore. We carry a small amount. I can use employee discount. Like, that's a good plan. Again, I would start off, like I said, just start off with a few colors. See if you like it. I would recommend at least three. Two if, two if you can't do three. I would not start off with just one. Because one, you can, to me, what makes Copic amazing is its ability to blend. So if you can't blend it, what's the point of having only one? And you might want to get like one, three, and five of the warm grays and then just branch out to like a colorless blender. But I thought they have a set that lets you, um, has all those in it. Also too, when I do my refills, I always put all the caps upside so I can make sure, because I panic a lot, I make sure that all the numbers match. You wanna make sure that the color you're putting into it, see how it says W4, hopefully you can see that on your screen. But um, when you see W4s, you should be able to see that. Whoops, don't trip over there. I wish I could show you the process, but I don't dare put it over the drawing because it, it can drip and I don't want to drip on the drawing because it'll be, oh, that ran on the side. Ooh, no paper towel handy? No, I do not. Not the end of the world though. Oh, it did drip all over, yikes. 
I've got some paper towel handy here. The good news is you wouldn't, don't do this for the actual drawing, but if you were to spill and stain Copic, you can actually use rubbing alcohol to get it off of a surface. Like, so my drawing surface here, you see I got a little bit of that alcohol on there. Rubbing alcohol will take it off. Now don't dilute Copic with it, but you can use it as a solvent. Like I got it all over this marker, look at this. So I could actually take rubbing alcohol and it would dissolve all of that off of there for me and clean it off perfectly. In fact, they recommend that if you want to clean off like the tips, like not the tip tip, but like see how this has got all kinds of gunk on it. Like you can take a Q, a rubbing alcohol on a Q-tip and wipe all that off. So that's fine, definitely fine. But don't like, don't like use it to clean the, the felt tips or anything. So be very careful. Like I said, you can use it to dissolve the, the, the crap that accumulates on the side. So that's the good thing is that even when it stains, you can still take it out to a degree with rubbing alcohol. Good old fashioned rubbing alcohol. Oh, baby, I love you. Hey, baby, can you do me a favor? Can you get me a Q-tip with a little bit of rubbing alcohol on it? Thanks. Just a little. I mean, it doesn't have to be soaked, but damp would be fine. That was my sweet wife. And I'll try to clean up the surface a little bit. Now, also, when I fill it up, I shake it, shake it a little bit like that, and then let it sit for about 30 seconds. It's been sitting for more than 30 seconds at this point, but it should be able to produce a much better, yeah, it's a little bit darker. Also, too, these felts can be, the, the felt tips can be replaced. Yeah, that's a way better flow. Look at that. It, it can be sticky. Like, it has a tacky feel to it. Oh, yeah, that's way better. Yeah, it's way, way better. Thanks, love. You're welcome. Is this the end? Yeah. Sweet. Scoot that up a little bit. So you can see it takes it right off, guys. Because there's usually a sticky residue, and you can also take it off the surface, too. I can pitch it in the trash can, I think. That's okay. Oh, okay. <laughs> My wife wanted to just watch me while I cleaned it up. But see, it, it looks, I mean, it cleans up. You can see the residue on there. What's that? A, a little bit. They can hear you a little bit, I think. Hello, world. <laughs> My wife just said hello, world, in case you didn't hear. Yeah, but I meant to ask that. Thank you, Christine, Dance Christine. I meant to ask, what do you mean animations? What do you think about animations? What did you mean by that, uh, small blueberry? I meant to go back, then I got so distracted cleaning the marker. I was like, what animations? Talk about Star Wars animations? Talk about my transitions I made? I don't think you meant my transitions. But thank you, thank you Christine, because I meant I got so sidetracked that I completely forgot to address Blueberry's initial question. Uh, one of my, one of my uh, viewers said hello back. Okay. <laughs> hello back. So yeah, what do you mean by animation, Small Blueberry? Please tell me you're still there, because I meant to ask you that, and I got so sidetracked. I had 15 disasters happening at once. I want to make sure I didn't spill all over the countertop, which I did, but you know. Okay, baby. Way better. That's way better color distribution. Now I need five, don't I? I really want to know what you meant about animations too. I'm gonna to probably message you. <laughs> One thing, guys, one thing I've been thinking about, too, is a Discord. Um, I don't know. I'm not a huge fan of Discord. I'm not good at using it, which is why I've been avoiding... Like, if people say, hey, join my Discord, I'm like, Ugh, running away, far away. I think I've gotten a little bit more comfortable with it. That's good. That's really good. I've gotten a little bit more comfortable with it. Oh, the technique of photographing successive, successive drawings or positions of puppets or models to create an illusion of movement when the movie is shown as, as a sequence. Like, I have a high admiration for folks that can do that. I don't know if I could do it. I don't know if I'd have the patience or the skill. There is one, um, one guy I really respect. His name, and I may have, I may have mentioned this in the stream before, but his name is Don Hertzfeld, and he does everything traditional. He created. Um, everybody remembers the. Um, if if you were in a certain age, you might remember my spoon is too big. Um, that animation, it's called Rejected. 
Uh, it was an Oscar nominated. I thought it won, but I, I looked it up recently. Apparently, it was only a nominee. But it was um, it was all hand animated. So everything he drew, everything in that cartoon was hand drawn. And he is a huge, huge, huge advocate of all hand drawn. Um, and honestly, speaking of um, positions and puppets, I really love the fact that our friend here, Baby Yoda, Grogu, is in fact a real life puppet. I think, if I'm not mistaken, that that was a choice from John Favreau, whom I love and respect. Yes, my spoon is too big. I am a banana. Yeah, that one is, <laughs> that's called Rejected, and it's by Don Hertzfeld, and he does so many other things. His stuff is very sublime, it can be very bittersweet and very beautiful, and also almost terrifying in a way. He did this study of dementia called, um, It's Such a Beautiful Day, and it's so heartbreaking. <laughs> but, I am a banana! Uh, but, oh my gosh, I love those. Because yeah, I watched that in college, I mean, who didn't? If you, were the, if you were in that age, you saw it in college. If you weren't of that age, you watched it later. <laughs> You watch it in school or something else. I mean, it came out when I was in college. It was probably on E-Bombs World, you know, when that was the hip happening place to be before it was blocked on my my college campus because they had all kinds of stuff on E-Bombs World. And it's still cool, but like I said, back in the day, it was the place to be to get anything anything going on with the world. You'd be like, hey, did you see that cool prank that somebody played? Um, so it was all the, all the rage. But anyway, um, so yeah, that, that was, Don Hertzfeld did all that. Um... See, and that's one thing I sort of dabbled in. If you saw, if you saw when I did my transitions, those animations I built for myself. But I used what's called Adobe After Effects, which I'm sure you guys probably are familiar with. They use it for a lot of the special effects. Not all the special effects, but a good chunk of them, like in the Marvel movies and stuff. Because you can take animations, all kinds of cool things, and combine it. So I learned, I watched about oh, days upon days upon days upon days about days of videos on after effects and learn how to do after effects in about a week <laughs> because it's just what you just said small blueberry it's basically still images but in sequence so you're just doing photoshop instead of doing one image you're photoshopping like seven images or in my case of my animation i think it's 191 separate images so you can program the computer to say okay this is how i want the the things to behave you can still go frame by frame if you want to to tweak anything but the computer renders the whole thing. So you can say, do you want blur? Do you not want blur? Um, you know, what, what sort of things do you want to do to your animation? So I basically like tweaked all the finer points, but um, so I, I had to hand everything about every inch of that thing. I mean, I, I mean, I went, oh, this is good. Okay, sorry, the colors are the right colors. Or at least they're close enough. I don't want to get too nitpicky about Grogu's robe because, I mean, who cares about Grogu's robe? I mean, it's just a robe. I mean, I care because it's part of the overall look, but no one's going to care if there's, like, one fiber off on his robe. And nobody's going to be like, oh, my gosh, the robe is so poorly drawn. They'll know if it's poorly drawn, but they won't notice if, like, a detail is incorrect. You know, nobody's going to be like, oh, my gosh, it doesn't fold like that, okay? It just doesn't fold like that. No one's going to say that because no one, it's for the same reason nobody recognizes people's pictures from foreheads because we don't look at the forehead. We look at um, we look at the face, so that's how we determine how, how we recognize somebody. Like, oh, I recognize them because I see their eyes or nose. So I want to give it some love, but if I'm getting if it's getting the full span of my attention, then I'm doing the wrong thing with my heart. Because <laughs> then it's a portrait of Grogu's robe and not a portrait of the of the child itself. But it's got a little bit of a warm quality to it in the robe, so. Uh, introducing this coloring in there is kind of helping out a little bit. There we go. But yeah, I've, I've, like I said, I've monkeyed with a little bit of that animation. I think I did a flip book as a kid. <laughs> it wasn't any good. Because <laughs> again, drawing, repeating the same drawing over and over again is not something that has ever been a skill set of mine. Um, let's see, C4, I think I need. I always hate when I say C4. It's cool gray four, but it always sounds like I'm set, quoting an explosive. C4, fire in the hole. Oh, okay. We could have done without that, right, guys? <laughs> we could have done without that. <laughs> Let's say C4 here. But, um, yeah, that's the right one. Ooh, get some of those darks in there. There's definitely a dark crease right there. Um, but I have a high respect for folks that can do that. Now, I'm not saying, like, poo on... on um, Pixar and folks like that to do it by animation, I mean by computer. Because computer is just a different tool 
that makes some parts of it e easy. And the thing is, at the same time, you might say, well, that's not like how the old animators did it. Well, a lot of them did rotoscoping, which is basically you film the actual live action and you trace over it. That's why Snow White's actions are so fluid because the Disney animators like, we can't really do it from scratch. And they're like, well, we'll take a woman image and we'll draw on the top of it. <laughs> what a way he's got C4. See, I play a lot of Overwatch, so... <laughs> Um, the, my, one of my main characters I, I play a lot is Junkrat, and he has these C4 packs that he can use. As, he's immune to them, so it, like he can explode underneath them, and he can use them to jetpack up, basically. But if an enemy's nearby, it will damage the enemy, but also, like I said, he can use it as a mobility trick, so he can flip the C4 under his feet, jump up, and then detonate the C4 and goes up. Animations is a bit hard, like stop motion. It is. Like, stop motion, to me, is one of the hardest, I can imagine, because you're not actually... You can't cheat. There's no way to cheat with... I mean, you can do some things with CGI. And again, I'm not saying CGI is cheating. I do a lot of Photoshop work, and I can see it still takes art skill. You can't just... You have to know what you're doing to do um, even Photoshop. It's not like Photoshop does it for you. You still have to put in the work. Um, it's just easy to correct mistakes or undo mistakes, which you can't do in a traditional drawing. You can't just hit Control-Z and be like, oh, I just reset the drawing. Yay! But at the same time... It doesn't, like I said, the computer doesn't do the work for you. Like, even with my my um, animation I built for my transitions, it was my logo, my background. I programmed every step of how the transition would work. So, and then I went over it, made sure it was a, it was a right. Like, as it rendered, I'm like, I didn't look every frame, but I looked at it and made sure it was a right down. And if, again, if a frame acted weird, I'd be like, what's going on here? So it's almost like the computer was like an animator and I was the supervisor. And I think that's what happens like with Pixar films and stuff. It's not that it's not cheating so much as it is they're just basically a creative team that does all the details they need for the computer to finalize the rest of it. And that's kind of what happened like in the traditional days of animation, if I'm not mistaken. Like you'd have artists that specialized in backgrounds and artists that specialized in um, uh, keyframing, which is where they, if I'm, again, I hope I'm using the terms right. Um, Keyframing is where you, like, you're drawing the essential motions. Like if you're doing a baseball, you might show like a baseball player hitting a baseball. The keyframes might be where the player is swinging, where the player makes contact, and then the follow through. So you're showing all of the key moments. And then there was another artist that would basically go back in and flesh in all the in-betweens. I forget what that's called. I want to say in-betweening, but I don't think that's what it's actually called. I need to be a little bit darker. Yeah, it's much better. But yeah, so again, there'd be all these artists that would do different things. Animation's a bit hard. Like, yeah, stop motion to me is just like, oof. Because again, I, I, there's these commercials, I think, for Expedia, the travel group. And they have this these people on like blankets and stuff on the floor. And they try to recreate scenes like they're standing up but they're actually laying down on the floor and they move all this stuff around. And to me, I'm like, wow, that just took an incredible amount of planning. Because if you do the wrong thing, or if you don't do an effect far enough, it'll look blasé. So you have to push the effect far enough that when you are done, it looks complete, but not so far that it looks almost exaggerated. And to me, I'm just like, wow, those commercials are just must have been so tricky. And I guess for an animator, it's no big deal. There's an animator called Pez, and he was featured on Don Hertzfeld's show. P-E-Z, and he does stop motion stuff. You might like him if you like if you like stop motion, Small Blue Bear, you might want to check him out, P-E-Z. Um, he does really short films. I mean, really, really short. We're talking like 20 seconds, maybe a minute. But that's because he's taking like everyday objects. And he actually did one, I think, of what he did, everyday action, objects made into like video games. And they're all stop motion with common day, every, everyday objects. You might, like I said, Pez, P-E-Z. I get the feeling if you're a fan of stop motion, you would like him. Because it's all, like I said, it's all just stop motion of every day. And he actually, I think he did an advertisement campaign because somebody spawned him on YouTube or wherever he posts his videos and was like, you need to do an advertising campaign for us. So he did his traditional stop motion um, goofiness. <laughs> goofiness, is that even a word? But um, it's cool stuff. Like I said, I, I've followed Pez for a good long time. I don't know if, I'm, if I followed on my current account. But he's worth it. Like I said, Don Hertzfeld and Mike Judge. Um, of course, you know, everyone knows Mike Judge from Beavis and Butthead or King of the Hill or both. And Mike Judge is very much the same way, traditional, if he can if he can manage it. Now, King of the Hill, I think, used CGI. 
but his whole idea was the models and the keyframes have to be drawn by hand. I don't care. He's like, I think he was like, I don't care if, if you if you use the computers to render it out, but the actual initial work has to be done by by hand. So from what I understand, Mike Judge always creates his characters on pen and paper first and never takes it to CGI until it's fully fleshed out. And he's like, okay, now that it's been rendered in the real world, now we can take it to the to the digital realm. And again, it's, just, it's like, I hate to try to cross platform, but that's kind of my whole career of education. It's like the composer, um, Henry Mancini said, I'm gonna go do things, I'll be back there. Okay, no problem, small blueberry. I'm glad you, you were here for when you were here and hopefully you'll be back because I enjoyed the conversation. Um, but um, Henry Mancini talked about that. Like he was saying, you know, if you, if you wanna be angry at the digital age and not take on, this was in the 60s, he wrote this book. He was like, you can choose to ignore synthesizers and also you'll be choosing to be left behind because ignoring technology will leave you behind. And even if you don't like the technology, at least be aware of it because it is the wave of tomorrow. And this was in 1960, he was saying this in his book of, about jazz composition and arrangement. And he was like, you should be prepared for this because if you're not, you'll be left behind and you don't want to be that guy. And I feel like you should be aware of the medium, even if you're not 100% a fan or even adept at it. Just have some aptitude in it. I'm not a good sculptor. Never have been, never will be. I've tried. I struggle. I suck. <laughs> I've accepted that I suck. So I just, I don't go into sculpture. I have a real raving appreciation for folks that can do it though. I love sculpt people when do sculpture well because I'm like, oh, my hat goes off to you. I can't think in 3D. Hi, Sarah. How's it going? It's okay that you forgot. I'm not that memorable. <laughs> I know. No, I'm just kidding, Sarah. I, I could have sent you a reminder. I was like, eh, you'll be here if you're here. If you're not, you're not my only mod right now. Although, if other people would tune into me, I might nominate them as a mod, meaning someone that I'm looking at in the other room. Yeah, she's not even looking over here. She's busy. <laughs> I thought about making Arlene a moderator. Thank you, by the way, Sarah. How are you? What are you up to? What's what's life in, like in your little corner, your corner of the world? One of those things in all of them. What's life like in your corner of the world is what I meant to say. That was remarkably convoluted, wasn't it, guys? Really convoluted. Yeah, my one mod. <laughs> I really don't... See, here's the thing. I don't really need a mod yet. However, I've told Sarah that she is, not, she is my only mod right now. because Not because I'm shov shoveling responsibility on her. Au contraire. I'm just giving her the power if she ever needs to use it. Because I've never had any need for a mod. Um, I've got a lot of bots that cut well not a lot. I've got two bots. I've got the stream elements bot. I've got night bot and they both patrol To the point of excessiveness and I've had to tell them both to sit down in the corner because they've both been naughty boys And I've had to both regulate both of them. And I know they're bots. I don't care. I'll still treat them like they're real existing things <laughs> but um, The um, Making cupcakes. Why would you say that to me and you don't have any cupcakes could have done a cooking stream I'm just kidding we have four birthdays at work, so. Or what what flavor my wife wanted to know? Sue, so you heard that, but you didn't hear about the part where I wanted to make you a mod. See, she heard about the cupcakes, but she didn't hear about the mod. Four birthdays at work, goodness sakes. I had two birthdays in Facebook, but that's only because the one person has two separate Facebook accounts. And I'm not hating on them for having two separate Facebook accounts. I know why they do. Um, but it was funny, so I was like, oh, it's the same person, twice. Okay, we're good. <laughs> I'm like, oh, I, get, I still gotta say happy birthday. What time? It's 10 o'clock. I've got a little bit of time. Plus, I've only seen like twice in life. I still like to say happy birthday if I know it's their birthday. I'm not that guy. I'm not going to be like, I only know you once. No, I'm not that guy. Happy early birthdays to them. Indeed, Christine. Happy early birthdays to them all. Happy early birthday. Well, yeah, happy early birthday. Sorry. Three. Come on, Jay. That's too dark. One thing you'll notice, guys, and I'm sorry, I talk to myself a lot in third person. I hate doing that because it reminds me of that Seinfeld episode. Jimmy really likes Elaine. That guy was annoying. I don't want to be that guy. I don't think I am because I'm, 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 I don't do it all the time. I say I a lot, and then I'll sometimes throw in the, ah, oh, JJ, what are you doing? So I don't do that all the time where I'm like talking to myself in third person. 
Okay, so there needs to be a two. That's like the crease of where the of the um I made cookies, by the way. To make you all jealous since you all have cupcakes you didn't invite me. Chocolate and yellow cake with the kinds with three kinds of frosting. Chocolate, cream cheese, and peanut butter frosting. She's not frosting them. They will be frosting them with their own frosting of choice. Why though? Why would you tell me all of this? You're making a you're basically making a cupcake bar. I hate that I can't be a part of this. I was gonna say I hate you, but I'm like, that is not at all true. I do not hate you. I hate the fact I can't be a part of that. There's nothing about that you there's nothing about me not being a part of that. That's your fault. I hate that I'm not a part of it, is the issue. That's the issue. Like I said, that's not your fault. You had nothing to do with that. <laughs> You're not like, you can't work with me so you can't have cupcakes. You had zero to do with that. Shoot. Alrighty then. There is a loose fiber of his coat. I am not portraying the loose fiber. I'm sorry. That would be a confusing detail that would make no sense. See, we as artists have to simplify. And one of the simplifications I want to do is not to portray that little thing. Also, too, I'm trying to be really loose with how I portray these fibers because, again, it's going to look somewhat okay. Oh, poo. I definitely need more three to flesh that out. There's three. Two. It's also better to work from light from dark on these, but sometimes I jump around because I get eager. And, and also, too, you can create different depths by depths. Did I say that right? Depths? Yeah, I said that right. You can create different depths by using all the full color range in some parts and not in others. It will create like a shallowness because you can see that the that's not as rich in some areas. So it can create an interesting effect, too. I don't know if it's a desirable effect. I'm still monkeying around with it to see if it's desirable or not. There we go. I'm starting to get a little bit of fluffiness in there. I'm going to go into it while it's still a little wet. So a lot of those strokes will blend out a little bit more. What happened? Your, our blue TV? Oh, okay. Oh, I see what you're saying. The choice sucks. Well, I think they rotate the stuff on Hulu quite a bit, love, so. I've, and also, too, I was talking with um, Matt yesterday. Matt's losing it. That um, that apparently Star Trek is available on all platforms. Like, it's on Hulu. It's on CBS+. Plus, It's on... Uh, Netflix and it's on uh, Amazon Prime, <laughs> so they have every 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 major streaming platform has Star Trek on it. <laughs> Here I was thinking I was gonna have to have the right one, and all of them apparently have it. My wheels are turning. A background of your artwork on stream. I love that idea. You need to make a TARDIS next. I've already made a TARDIS. I thought you knew this. I already made a TARDIS. I'm hurt. You don't remember this. Not that hurt, honestly. Sometimes I forget I made a TARDIS. Okay, I need the lightest marker here. Here we go. This is, yeah, there we go. Because I'm going to leave just a little bit of light there. Because what's going to make it really, these white parts sing is by putting the warm gray at least very much. Hey, welcome back, small blueberry. You missed out on the cupcakes. I didn't bring them. Sarah didn't bring them either. Sarah made them, though. Sarah is a proud nerd girl. I'm going to send you a pic of my Halloween costume from last year's Gryffindor girl. Ooh, I think, you've, I think I've seen it, but send it again. What happened, babe? Yeah, Hulu's good about, like, broadcasting old TV shows that have just been on, like, older this week. Not, like, old, like, from 50 years ago or something. I mean, they got some on there. Yeah, they can, they update, they'll update with the current episode, like, the next day, I think. Arlene found the episode of Saturday Night Live with Paul Rudd. I think I've effectively lost her for the evening. She'll be immersed in that. <laughs> There's another reminder, guys. I have a reminder bot that's sometimes a little bit too hyperactive, but it reminds y'all, if you are working digitally, save your artwork. I put that in there because I've forgotten to save my artwork, and I've lost my artwork, and I've almost lost my mind. Over it. I've already lost my mind. <laughs> I've almost lost my mind over my digital work being lost. So 
Let's be clear about what I meant there. <laughs> okay, so the collar's look, looking pretty good. I'm going to put some more. Wait, is this too? Yeah, this is too good. So I can diddly bop some different darkers in here. And then... Again, if this is a very loose shagginess, I'm okay with that. But I would rather it be, you know, kind of clear what this is looking like, you know. So I'm doing little short, little choppy strokes so that the... This gets a little bit darker than it actually shows. So we're going to so still keep up with light little choppy strokes here. There's choppy strokes there. The thing is, it's really dark right now because it's got to be blended in. I just made a character and I don't have a name for him. Any ideas on names? What, what character? For what? What universe? Like, what, what's the context? We're talking like a D&D &D character? We're we talking about like a Star Wars universe character? Is there a certain universe he's in? Because sometimes you can you can lose an audience over a name. I mean, I'm exaggerating because, I mean, no one lost, lost it about Grogu, but I do remember seeing articles when they said, they've revealed Baby Yoda's name and fans aren't having it. And I was like, what? His name is his name. At least it wasn't like what they did with the Klingon homeworld, man. That took forever for them to nail down that it was Kronos. Q-O-N-O-S. Kronos is the actual pronunciation. But they originally called it, like, Kling. That didn't go over well. And then they just said that Kling was just a city on, on Kronos. But that'd be about as silly as naming our home planet human. <laughs> you know what I mean? That's why they realized it was dumb. I'm glad they renamed it Kronos, though, like, canonically. Because, again, who names their home planet after the major race? I mean, to be fair, they always portray aliens as saying Earthlings. Names can rank or break a character. That's true. This is true. Because it should have some meaning. Some. I'm not saying every character needs to be loaded with meaning, but my main character for my comic, her name is Allison Blizzard. Because it's based on Alice in Wonderland, hence the reference to Alice and Allison. But at the same time, like the Blizzard has nothing to do with Alice in Wonderland. But I do like that I want to tie in a lot of themes of winter into the comic. So the fact that her last name is Blizzard is going to seem kind of obvious, but I also think it's going to be kind of cool because it's going to be like, if she sees references to winter, she's going to be like, oh boy, like my last name, Blizzard. Got it. Ha ha. But it's also to a reference to my friend who's a big Alice in Wonderland fan. And her last name is Blizzard. So it's kind of a one-two punch on that. It's kind of a, a double pun. You know, I want it to be a tribute to my friend who loves Alice in Wonderland while also being a, bringing in that. I used a kind of, okay, this little bit is so cute. Oh, oh, hi, Crafting Canvas. Hi, I didn't even see you come in. Oh, you know what? I found you on, on Twitch. I followed you and I saw your Baby Yoda things on there and I was like, I'm drawing one. I think I mentioned it. I was trying not to be self-promotional. I, I try not to be. Um, I like to mention if I am, because I, when, especially when I saw your emotes, I was like, oh my God, those emotes are so cute. And I'm like, maybe she would like to see it, even briefly. Um, but again, I try not to be self-promotional, because that can be rude. It can be seen as rude. I don't mean it to be rude, but I'm like, let me not be rude. <laughs> I'm kind of used to different group, group of people and OC... AU. OC's original character. AU is what? I don't know what AU means. Oh, I should know. I feel like I'm it's on the tip of my tongue. I can't think of it. AU. See, I think about astronomical unit, which is the distance between Earth and Sun, I think. Question mark? Is an AU? Um, but yeah, I loved your emotes. Oh my gosh. I when I saw them in your channel, I was like. Oh my god, those are adorable. And I was like fanboying over a little bit. Because I was just like, after having looked through a half a dozen images of Grogu, Baby Yoda, to, to find one that I liked enough to draw. Because I knew I'd be looking at a lot. Alternate Universe. I thought it might have been that. I, my brain was, I didn't think Alternate Universe, but my brain was dancing around something like that. I was like, it's something in And then when you say Alternate Universe, like, that makes sense. So like a... Almost like how um, Watchmen is set in a different DC universe than our DC proper, technically. Or, um, yeah, 
I guess that's right. That's my best analogy is that Watchmen isn't really Earth. It's like an alternate Earth. How long has it taken you? I feel like this has taken me a year. It's taken me way longer than I anticipated. <laughs> I will be frank. Um, it's taken me three sessions of streaming. I did the line art off stream and then the line, the eye was looking a little crooked, so I touched it up. Um, the line art took me um, a little bit of time, but I wanted to get it right before I went on stream. And then um, I started streaming it last Tuesday and um, came back uh, with it, you know, all the art done. See, that? that's not quite right, is it? No, it's not. So, yeah, I mean, I, I started last Tuesday to actually start the drawing drawing of it, the actual coloring in. So, there are about three-hour sessions, so about six hours, but, you know, not working obsessively hard on it, like, you know, taking breaths and pauses to chat. But that's okay. I, I normally do that anyway. I'll work on it for an hour here, an hour there, put it away, hour here, hour there in real life. So, the fact that I'm just, like, taking my pauses here while I'm working on this is... It's it's pretty normal way for me, a pretty much normal way for me to work. It's just now I have somebody to talk to while I do that normal process. But things always take longer than you can want to expect. This is true. This is why I was late to stream, guys. Like uh, for those that may have been waiting on me to come on at nine, as per my announcement, I sigh because I feel like I let everybody down. Um, I restarted my computer, thinking it would take no more than ten minutes, and it took twenty, um, or at least it took fifteen to do the restart process, and it took me about another five on top to get OBS finally up and running. OBS is a fickle beast and will like to throw you under every bus it possibly can. That is its joke in life. It is bad I had three pickles in a row. Oof. Yeah, that's true. I, I was doing sub, sub drawings for subscribers. One took me three hours, four hours took me 30, I thought 30 minutes, one hour max. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's, it's, um, oh, I feel that pain so much. That is so relatable. F in the chat for all the projects we thought would be done in time. <laughs> F in the chat. Oh. Uh, that is too relatable. That is big mood. I'm like, I'll be done with it. Like my comic. I thought I'd be done with it. <laughs> Cup of coffee art. Hi, how are you? I like how you did that highlighted. I always forget I can do the me command. To do that, you guys, I think that was the me command. We do forward slash. Oh, no, no. You tagged me in it. That's how it came up. Um, but you can also do a forward slash me command. I didn't know that. Um, if you do forward slash me and then put whatever you put after it, it puts an emphasis on it. It puts an emphasis on it. But all kidding aside, I forgot you could do the highlights too. When you put somebody's name on there, it highlights it. How are you today? A uh, cup of coffee? I wish it was an easier alternative. <laughs> I wish complaining about OBS would immediately produce an easier to use alternative. Um, I don't know. I, I like it. It's just, it takes forever to start up. I, I, I've learned it more. It is fickle. For what it does, it's pretty amazing. Is it flawless? <laughs> what what technology is flawless? I always say this, and I'll say it, that the, the great horror, the true fright of the modern age is that technology isn't the savior we thought it would be. It really isn't. It has messed up a lot more than it's saved, honestly. <laughs> now, that being said, I love technology but not as much as you, you see. But I will still love technology. Always and forever. I had to do the Kip Dynamite reference, guys. I am sorry. I had to do the Kip Dynamite reference. Okay, I see a little line here that separates the creases there. Good. I just typed into... Oh. I just typed in two of the letters of your username and then press tab. Yeah, I know they got all these cool, 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 K-E-W-L. They have all these cool short keys now. <laughs> Sorry, my friend spells cool that way. Um, My bestie from work, cool. But yeah, it's got all these cool short shortcut keys where you hit like alt tab. If you type some things a little bit, oh, you meant to say this, didn't you? And you're like, yes, I meant that. I meant that, Twitch, thank you. And it'll fill in the gaps for you, which is kind of nice. It's kind of like a swipe for your Twitch viewing. I guess. Yeah, it's gonna be a more of a sharper crease there. Yeah, like that. Yeah, like that. More like that. There you go. It was looking a little artificial being such a the line was mimicking the other line. It was just garbage. So I looked at it again, I was like, no, it's not even shaped like that either. So And this is actually a little bit wider too on this part here. Yeah. 
better, 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 better. I don't want too many shapes that match each other in size and shape and color. Also, a bit, a bit a late morning, I might leave, I might leave out some words as I type fast. That's okay. I do the same thing. I, I, my brain thinks faster than I type, so I miss out on some. I always start with something about three pickles. I was like three pickles. <laughs> I'm gonna lurk, loving this little bait, this little boy. Thank you. And oh, hi, cup of coffee. By the way, I saw your email. Who is that? What is that email? Oh, I have to peek at it. Oh, it's cool. Sorry, <laughs> I'm an emote snob now. I've made some for Proud Nerd Girl. Um, so I've, I've truly learned how to appreciate how much work goes into an emote. Like before I was just like, oh, it's a cute cartoon character. It took him like, what, four hours to make? And then I made him, I'm like, no, it takes like three days to make a decent one. And I'm sure it takes people that do it more often a lot less. But this guy who knows how to draw still takes like four hours plus of hard work. It's not easy. Emoting is not easy, guys. That's why they say if you're going to do a church channel... You know, pay the money for a good emote because, oof, it's not as easy as it looks. It is not. Emotes are hard. There are some beautiful ones out there, man. If I had millions, I would probably subscribe to so many Twitch channels just so I could possess the emotes because there are so many beautiful ones out there. And by the way, Crafting Canvas, thank you for the lurk. I actually have a lurk command if you wanted to use it, but I'll, I will I would put it on my own. I'll, I'll just put it out there so you guys can see the lurk command. You don't have to use the lurk command, but it's... um. I, I just liked it because it came up one time. Oh, I, I used it. My bad. <laughs> I, w I just wanted to see the script. I wasn't saying, oh, you must use the lurk commander. You're not truly lurking. No, it's because I'm... The lurk commander thing is kind of special. It, it, it happened one time. When I actually, I, I, I sp said something remarkably like that in my stream. And I copied it down because I thought it was a nice thing. Because it's, it's... Lurks are love. So the lurks are always appreciated. Um, so I'm just... I appreciate when you when people lurk because I did, I never understood the lurk culture, and then when I started getting into Twitch during this pandemic, I started understanding what the importance of lurking was, and how it helps a channel and how it shows love anyway, and so because of that, I wanted to reflect that in my script, my little script that pops up that tells you you know thank you for still being here. So it's important because sometimes it's not it's, it's not always important to be talking. It's certainly welcome, and this is a welcome space. But at the same time, you know, there's more to life than just, you know, sometimes you can't. You're busy with something else. Or you just don't have the energy. Or anything. But at the same time, you know, just being present. How many times I've been through going through something sad or depression. I, I've fought a lot of depression. And my wife just being in the same room, breathing the same air with me, just being present with me, meant the world. Speaks volumes. Just be there. That's why it looks are important. I'm going to lurk because, whoopsie, I missed that. I'm going to lurk because the hubby forgot to order our dinner. <laughs> yeah, we went and got hamburgers real quick before stream. They were good. We ordered small hamburgers, and actually they were more than filling for both of us. What are you going to have to eat? Well, you're lurking, so don't don't have to answer. Maybe answer when you come back if you heard. But thanks again for the lurk, um, Chris, Dance Christine. This music is tense. It is very tense. I hope it's not too tense. I try to have a variety. This is from bensound.com. And I find bensound.com to be rather satisfying music. But this is one of those Sunday, Sunday, Sunday. Monster Truck Rally, see Grave Digger. Like, that's the kind of music this one makes me think of. Which I don't, again, I'm not, I don't hate it. I rather like it. That's why I downloaded this track. But it is rather like, da -da, da -da, you know, very tense. But again, it gives me the chance to do my my monster truck rally voice that I don't get a chance to do. I thought about doing a redeemable for points on this channel of impressions. I have thought of three or four I can do decently well. One was one of them I came up with Guilford Godly doing Shakespeare. And I won't do it now because I want to do keep this stream as cozy as possible. I stole that from Debbie Cap, but I do want to keep it as cozy as possible because I, I, I don't want to get too loud. It is what, what 10, 22 at night. And I don't know, I might be close to finishing Baby Yard. I just gotta get all these things dotted in. If I work honestly hard, honest and hard at this, I might be able to get a chunk of this finished tonight. I'm feeling like it's gonna be Friday that I finish. I'm close. I don't know if I'm that close. Like, I don't wanna rush it, but I don't know. There's not much more I need to do on this, honestly. I might take some colored pencils and play around on top of them, but psst, honestly, it's not 
not essential that I do that, and I'm close to it even if I don't do that. There we go. Putting some warm colors there. But yeah, most of my songs are pretty chill. This is one of the chiller ones. But I like having a really cozy stream, you know? Like I saw the, like Debbie Cat does that. Debbie Cat's a really awesome streamer. Let me actually let me actually do a couple shout outs real quick. I want to shout out Proud Nerd Girl. And also, oh geez, I gotta do more shout outs, guys. I forget to do it. Hopefully y'all are still here. Crafting Canvas has got some awesome stuff, if I remember correctly. Because I think they're the ones that that have those. Oops, come on. Yes. Yes, she's awesome. And then also, Proud Nerd Girl, she streams. But she does a lot of gaming. But she her gaming streams are just amazing. Like, I've never seen anybody do gaming streams like Proud Nerd Girl. Like, basically, there's my wife, sweet wife. She's watching Weeb, I believe. Um, ooh. She's watching Reba. I'm glad they have that. Reba was a pretty fun show. And actually watching back and over again, I'm like, this was actually a lot more brilliant than I remembered the first time through. <laughs> um, but she's awesome. I'm proud of her girl. She does a lot of like community events with friends of hers. Community events, like the people that are a part of her community. She'll play with like um, streamers that she knows, their kids. I've never seen anybody do co-streams with, with um, like friends' kids on Twitch. And she just works with them so well. Like, ugh. Like, I'm not a, I, I'm not really good with kids, so when I see other people that are, I'm like my respect goes out to them, and I'm just like she just does a be beautiful job of you know creating, a, to paraphrase Debbie Cat, but create a comfy cozy space for you know, it's like a family friendly gaming stream where she's actually being family with her fam her streaming family and her actual family, which is kind of a really cool thing you know I just. It's something special that I'm sure other people have done on Twitch before, but I don't think I've ever seen it before. And she does such a great job. Like, she really does. And it's just, it warms your heart to hear, um, you know, her working with other, you know, kids. And she's like, okay, do you want to play? She plays Fortnite. So you'll hear like, okay, do you want do you want to play do this? Do you want to do that one? Okay, we'll do that. And I'm like, oh my gosh. It's like I'm watching family play. Like the best family. It's just really cozy. Um, yeah, I'm sneaking up on completion on this bad boy. <laughs> I don't know. Again, I don't know if I'll be done, done, done tonight, but I'll be close. Because again, I'm still toying with the idea of, um, you know, do I want to, um, do I want to add colored pencil to heighten parts of this? I'm still on the fence on that. Still on the fence. It's not a no, it's not a yes. It's just, I don't know yet. Well, I've also got his back, his other hand here to do too. And so I'm gonna do this real quick. There we go. Okay, speak like that. And I might take, while well, it's still wet, because it'll blend a little bit nicer if it's still wet. There we go. A little bit better. Blend all that out. Just give it a chance to kind of blend out on its own. Feather out. I'm trying to find where the check marks are. Oh, okay. <laughs> Okay, <laughs> way off the map there. So I'm gonna try to race in a little bit more of the line there because it's a little bit, I, I kind of overshot my line a little bit. That's okay, I can correct it a little bit with a little bit of the colorless blender. Glad y'all can't see me right now. I'm kind of sitting with my forehead in my hands. So it looks like I'm exasperated and it's not that. I'm really just deep in thought. I'm trying to look at it and trying to see what other parts I need to do. The hand needs to be done. And the background needs to be a lot better. Like this part right here, this needs to be filled in. It's not that hard to fill in. I just have to actually take the time to do it. Okay. Okay, so. Hey babe, what you watching? Hey, babe. Arlene. 
What are you watching? Oh, I thought you were watching Reba. I was a little confused about why DJ Khaled was on Reba. My gosh. Wow, okay. <laughs> That's hilarious. Okay, best part ever was the Wow, okay. Wow, okay. That was a thing that happened. <laughs> Switch to the chisel tip now that I've got a little bit more precision in here. And actually... There we go. So basic idea is I just want to fill in this part here with some color just so that it fills, just so it gives, right now it looks kind of unfinished, but if I can go in here and kind of like, you know, fill in a lot of the colors like that. There we go. Trying to preserve a little bit of that white edge just so that it keeps it makes it pop out from the background a little bit. <gasps> okay, Lalas, how's it going? I'm doing pretty good. How about you, Lalas? I've got small blueberry. I have to head out soon, but I'll be on for the next stream. Okay, great. I'll be here on um, same time, 9 p.m. Friday. Hopefully, if I'm not finished by, I don't think I'll finish tonight. I think I'll take it slow just so I don't have to rush tonight to finish. So I think next stream will be my last one of Baby Yoda. What you up to, Lalas? Glad you just stopped in. What are you and Stellar working on? Actually, while I think about it, Stellar is another gaming streamer, a friend acquaintance, a friend acquaintance of, of mine. I know I don't talk too much in your streams, guys, and I'm so sorry I didn't talk today in... Um, poop, poop. think that's how you spell it or is it is that how you spell it is that how it, or is that how you do it um lalas i'm doing good thanks watch this is us oh this is us was tonight babe oh did you oh okay my wife watched it i was like wait i forgot about that i mean it's neck i shouldn't have had but it's so late but i'm here now <laughs> oh let me fix that then let me do a new shout out sorry i couldn't remember and it, and that it illness me. It's been a long day. <laughs> it's like, is it player or playa? It's playa, stellar playa. What I need to do is I need to give you. Oh, what happened here? Heavens to Murgatroyd! My reference just went all bonkers. Um, what happened? Okay. Um. Okay. No, no, no. Control Z. Whew! Something happened. Something that survived. Okay, it's fixed. Thank God. Um, but yeah, I ought to make a command so that you can do that too. I wouldn't mind if you do shout outs. I trust you, Lalas. Like, I, I know you're going to come in here and be like, shout out PewDiePie. <laughs> What's up, PewDiePie fans? I'm just crashing in his in his, in his his stream. I know you're not going to do that to me. I've known you too well at this point, Lalas, to know you're not going to come in here and just randomly crash and be like, What's up, players? Thought I'd stream snipe and take all these people with me. Peace, yo. <laughs> You're not going to do that. Even if you did it, I'd probably like, Pfft. yeah, you need to be watching, you need to be watching Stellar now, not me. <laughs> you got the name Stellar for that streaming site, Glimesh. 
Glimash? Gilgamesh? What? That's supposed to open in a few weeks. Not the name still for that streaming site. Oh, my, you're cracking me up. <laughs> yeah, I'd be more happy to help out when I can. Yeah, I mean, here's the thing. I don't... Sarah right now is my only mod. Because I don't really need a mod. And I didn't... My whole thought was, I don't want to settle somebody with the responsibility of being a mod. I don't. I don't want to make somebody feel like they have to be responsible. But at the same time, I realized, wait a second. If I give Sarah the power, she at least has the ability to do it if she can. What's up, babe? Oh. <laughs> but it's not about saddling Sarah with the responsibility. It's giving her the power to do something if she was in the present the chat. You don't want to go to work? I'll let him out. Love you, doll. But again, it's not about being saddled with responsibility. It's it's more like giving her the power if the time if the time is right. So I wouldn't mind if I give you even if it's not mod, I might give you some privileges. Like I might give you like, oh, okay, she's it's privileged to do X, Y, and Z. Just because I trust you and uh, again, you're you're not here all the time that you that you need to be like how do I put this? You don't have to be here all the time to to keep an eye on stuff. I can keep an eye on stuff pretty much on my own. But if you're in here and something happens or if you want to do something, I'm like, uh, I trust you. You already know what being a mod is. You probably know more about modding than I do. I know you do. It's not even a probably. It's a definite. But at the same time, I'm like, I don't want to make you responsible for my channel. But at the same time, I wouldn't mind giving you the power that if you were in here and you're like, hey, I want to do a shout out for Stella. Do you mind? I'm like, sure, go ahead. I'm just busy drawing. Please put that in there. You know, and then, um, you know, again, it gives you the power to be able to do that without me having to stomp and do it for you and then getting it wrong like I just colossally did just a few seconds ago. Because that was beautiful, right? That was a beautiful moment. Remember that time when I misspelled your, your husband's name? That was fantastic. That was all five minutes ago. So sentimental. Um, you know, I'd be happy to help. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, exactly. And I used to have this whole hang-up about... I don't want to saddle my friends with it. Now I'm like, Pfft, I'll just give you the power when you when, when you're when you're here, if you're available. Because I realized that as I started watching more streams on Twitch, I never heard somebody go, you know, mods are like got it. Well, more often than not, I'd hear, do I have any mods on the channel right now? Do I have any, guys? Do I have any mods on the channel? Are there any mods present? I need somebody to do something. Where are my mods right now? I hear that more often than not. I'm like, oh, mods aren't a responsibility when people show up and clock a bunch of time clock. Mods of power that is available to people that they trust, and maybe they're there and maybe they're not. Oh. And that's when I realized that it's not a responsibility. It is, in fact, a power bestowed upon the trusted. By the power of Grayskull! But to answer your full question, he's good. He's tonight, night shift, tomorrow night. He's, he's still... Ugh, it's a tongue twister. But... <laughs> <laughs> but to answer your question, he is good. He's doing night shift still tonight and the last night for that. Yay, I'm not a fan of night shift. <laughs> Agree. We had to do this thing at work called schedule bidding, where we basically say, these are the schedules I'd prefer to have. Almost every single one of them that was at night, I put like, like there was 52 I had to rank from 1 to 52. Which would you rather have? And some of them were duplicates, so I got to say, okay, I want that one. 1, 2, 3, and it's the same thing three times. But the last one was like, uh, it was like four, four tens ending at 11 at night. And I'm like, you know, I don't want four tens that end at 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock at night. Now, if I was by myself and didn't have any uh, any life, I, I would be like, yeah, give me that shift. But I play Overwatch with my friends. Very minimum, I play Overwatch. Oh, oh, I meant to tell you something wrong last. Um, I play Overwatch with my friends. So I'd miss on all the gaming streams with them. I don't mind shifting my actual stream to the day. But the problem is, I would miss out on all my time with my friends playing Overwatch because I'd be too busy working. And then, not only that, but if, you know, COVID, when COVID's all said and done, which is probably a long way away, honestly, but we're getting close, um, I won't be able to do photo shoots because I'll be at work till 11 o'clock. That will stink. In the summertime, at least, I could do a photo shoot after work if I work till 5.30, because I can just get off of work, jet over there at 6, and be ready to shoot from 6.30 to 7, 9 o'clock. So it's not like it's a big deal. It's, you know, it's still doable, even on days I work. However, if I work till 11 p.m., the sun's down. That doesn't help me at all. 
so I don't want to work until, um, you know, that late at night. So those are my last choices. Night shift stinks. Now I'm working from home for now, so I'd rather not have to drive on the roads at 11 o'clock at night when they finally make me go back into the office, which may, is not until at least June, but plan ahead, folks. Um, if anything, I'm a, I'm, I try to be a planner of stratagem. So I'm thinking, okay, I don't mind working at night, but the problem is I would leave my wife alone at night. I hate that idea. Rather not have to do that. So there's a lot of things I'm, I don't like about that whole process. I'm like, no what pass. So all the late night shifts, I put a, put a zero on. Um, yeah, night shift is like, poof. My dad used to work night shifts. Again, he was a night guard. Not a bad, not a big deal, but again, it's not for everybody. And it does take a lot of discipline to get, and again, we were, as a family, that was sucky. Because you had to be really quiet because poor dad had to sleep in the middle of the day. That really stunk. Um, sometimes he just has to. Yeah, and I get that. Like, I'm a team player. Don't get me wrong. I'm very much a team player. That's why I love Overwatch so darn much. Because the most, most successful teams in Overwatch are the best the teams that work together as, as, as a whole better. And I, I, I just talked to my manager about this today, and she was like, I feel like you may not be the best on the team, but you'll give it your all every time. I said, that's exactly right. I may not be statistically the best on the team, but you can guarantee if I'm breathing... I'm giving you everything I've got as best as I've got. You know that. And my manager's like, you do. Every time. And I'm like, I try my best. You know, I might, I might be a, a mountain of fail, but I sure try my best every time. You, you put me in, coach, I will play as hard as I know how to play. And I just... Look at that wonderful spot. The black spot. Pirate's death sentence. It's okay. Out rubbing alcohol takes it right off. We were stepping. We showed that earlier in the stream. Yeah, um, yeah, we have my little ones and they are so noisy. <laughs> oh my gosh. Sorry about that. I, I feel like I said to Jerry, like, <laughs> they're loud. Congratulations, you have loud kids. That was not what I meant. That's how it sounded, but that's not what I meant. Um, but yeah, I know what I thought about doing, Lalas. I don't know if I told if you, you, you dropped in the stream after I said this, but I thought about doing um, impressions for channel points. Or, yeah, channel points. That's the right word, right? Yeah, that's the right word. Like, I thought of a few that I would do. Like, no, no requests, because I'll, I'll botch requests. But I have like, I'll have like, I thought, I thought about it. I was like, oh, I could do Gilbert, God Gilbert Godley really reading some Shakespeare. That would have to be done earlier in the day because I get really loud. Um, but I thought that would be hilarious. Gilbert Godley reading Shakespeare. That would be hilarious. Um, also, um. All the one I thought of was Skeletor saying, Sprinkles! That'd be hilarious. I just thought it would be funny. Welcome back, Dance Christine. You came back just in time for me to be doing my Skeletor impression of him saying Sprinkles. That was fun and awkward. <laughs> I need an unlert command. I do need an unlert command. I didn't... I was in Debbie Cats today, and I've seen other people have unlerts. I'm like... I was like, I wonder if Debbie's got one. I put it in unlurk. I'm like, oh, she's got one. I probably should have one, too. I don't judge everything I do by Debbie, but she's got pretty good ideas about stuff. So when I see her do stuff, I'm like, yeah, that's a pretty good idea. Because I've seen it in other channels first. But, oh, thank you. I thought by, he would pop more if I start putting in some of the background. I got to do his hand yet. But I think I'm close to being done next stream because I don't want to rush. And I want to pop out some of the more darks. Like right now, there's, there's there needs to be a lot more darks and stuff. There's weird abstract shapes in the background. I don't want to get too literal about those backs, those ones in the back, but I, I don't know. I do want to get some abstract shapes back there. This one always makes me think of a blend. This this piece by Ben Sound always makes me think of a blend between Interstellar and Inside Out. If you know, if you've ever seen both those movies, you know what I'm talking about. You're like, ooh, that does sound like Inside Out, or ooh, that does sound like interstellar i just love there is i don't know if y'all watch this channel it's called um yes it's got to go with your look one too right yeah i don't that's what I'm, now i'm gonna have to think of a script of that like i don't think i put that on my phone let me check i have on my phone i have a uh a ta uh, stylus tablet so i can pull out my little stylus and ba -da, i get this and i have a list and what i've been doing is um 
what I've been doing is I will go, I'll make lists. So I don't mind if you see my phone, but I have all these lists on here. Say like I've got Gilbert Gottlieb. That's my remembering that I'm a, I might do impressions of him doing Shakespeare, Skeletor, possibly the Joker, but the Joker, when I do the Joker, it's big. It's a big voice. I can do the Joker. I do the Mark Hamill version of Joker and it's huge. It's like if, uh, huge is not like it's big and important. I mean, huge is in like it would be loud and would fill the room. And plus, I don't, it would really make some people tense, I think, to hear the Joker at, you know, 1130 at night, 1120 at night. Change Twitch profile pic, because I know it's got my portrait and I'd rather have my icon. So well, the other thing was on lurk command. Now I put these down because this is what I do. I go, th I, I save my, all my notes and I, I, I mark off what I've been doing. Like Sarah's emote. Um, I was going to do David Katz, um, her draw this in your style. And I ran out of time. Um, a drawing from my friend of mine. I have to do photo ads. I wanted to enter a new, new Copic contest. That's a no time. I make these lists because then I can, I keep track of what I've done and what I haven't done. It reminds me that I did do something. And when I'm like, Oh, I didn't accomplish anything. And they look at my list. and like, look at all these scratched out things. Clearly I did something. I did a lot. So it's a reminder. So I don't forget anything. But also a reminder to myself that I did accomplish something, even when I felt like I didn't do much. I did something. So I just find it important to make lists like that so that I can cross them out the stuff. So you can say, hey, look, you did the thing. And it's true. You should be thinking about you shouldn't be thinking about the things you didn't do. There's plenty of things you didn't do. Everybody's done. There's just too much time to do everything you can possibly want to do. So you can't think about the things you wanted to do. You can think about the, th you should be thinking about the things you have time to do. Like focus on the things that bring value to your life, that make you happy. This music makes me sentimental. Um, you know, focus on the things that make you happy, that make you feel good about yourself, that hopefully make others feel good about themselves too. You gotta focus on you a little bit though, because I mean, if you can help other people along the way, oh, do it. Just do it. But if you can't, then you know, do what you can do. You have to look at, I mean, one thing I did a lot was I, I, I tend to overextend myself. That's way in the wrong place. <laughs> so I'm talking about all this stuff. I'm like, that's in the wrong place. But you have to help yourself first. And I oftentimes would um, put myself out where I didn't need to be at times when I was overextended. And you don't want to do that. You definitely don't want to do that either. So you have to find a balance between, the background's looking kind of yucky right now. We'll fix it. I'm not worried about that. That's the one thing I think is going to slow me down is doing a background that's convincing and not boring. But you have to look, take care of yourself. And I oftentimes neglect my own self-care because I try to overextend myself and put myself in places, too many places at once. Um, so then I had to learn how to scale back so that I could, you know, take care of myself properly. And um, while still being present for the people that do need me, you know. And there's a, again, there's a balance. You have to find a balance between the two. You, ha you can't just do, you can't just do self-preservation. You do have to consider others, but at the same time, you can't do that. You can't, you can't do, you can't throw yourself under the bus first. You have to, and that's one thing I'm, you know, I was raised in a very religious household, but I mean, what's it say? You know, what, what's the, the Bible does say, you know, love others like you love yourself. If you don't love yourself first, how can you even make sense of that? You know what I mean? How do you make sense of love others as you love yourself if you don't love yourself first? You don't. You have to be able to love yourself first. Because then, you, you, then your, your well's empty. Life is such a balancing act. It is. It is. But you got to take care. If there's a time when you need to take care of yourself, you got to step back and take care of yourself. you got to. Because then otherwise you're, you're drawing. you got to let your well fill back up with water or else your friends going to be drawing from an empty well. That is not, that's a disservice to them. So even if you get in that very servitude attitude, you cannot, because you can then go back and say, wait a second, how are my friends going to draw strength from me if there's nothing left to draw out? They're not. So if you want to, if you get, and you shouldn't, this shouldn't be a reason. Your reason for taking time for yourself should be because you want to, you, you value yourself enough to say, I need to take time for myself. But at the same time, even if you're like very self-sacrificial, the very least you should say is, wait, I can't do this because then my friends will be will be drawing from me when I have nothing left to give them. And then you'll maybe realize that you need to take that time for yourself. 
See, I don't, that's too dark there, so that's going to be gone. Bye-bye. I'm going to let that soak in a bit. Again, if it doesn't get perfect, that's fine, because it's it's still very wet, because I couldn't, again, I couldn't, I couldn't get the dehumidifier to work, so that's the bad news. A little feather a little bit as I, I'm using the colorless blender to kind of race out some stuff. It'll feather a little bit in the color, but that's fine. It's going to make it look like the hairs bleed out a little bit too, which is fine. Okay, we're getting close, actually. We're getting very close. I need to punch up some of these darks, though. Um, I need six, I think. Oh, is there a warm brown I can throw in there? I know one of the warm browns I would love to use is actually what I would call Hell Froze Over Mode. It's completely busted, and I might need to buy a new one. I've tried to repair it, I think, and it's not worked. Let's use W7 and see what we get from this. I just want to punch up a lot of these darks really high. Yeah, that's pretty good. There we go. A lot better. So I can just punch up some of the darks. It'll add some depth to the rest of it. I come in peace, my man. <laughs> Matt, how's it going? That's going to stay the way it is. Can't make everything dark, but at the same time, I do want to kind of combine some stuff. Like, oh, this goes dark, this doesn't. This goes dark, this doesn't. This stays dark, this goes dark. I'm kind of just going off the original image here as much as I can. What are you up to, Matt? Also, I need to give a shout out to Matt's losing it because he is a streamer, an amazing streamer. He just got started himself. He is a um, he does a lot of he does some creative streams right now, but together me and Matt do a podcast together called This and That with Jason and Matt. And right now it does not exist yet. It is we are in production. We are producing many episodes. I should say Matt is producing many episodes. I have been done, doing nothing but sitting my butt and talking, and he's been recording that and editing that feverishly um, to be ready for various podcast channels. Um, I also like to wipe off my marker, guys, because um, sometimes with this, uh, the darker colors, sometimes it'll accumulate on the tips of the markers. So then I'll use the, like a clean sheet to, um, or a clean part of the sheet to wipe that off so that it's not overwhelmed with dark shades if I don't have another place to put it properly. The, the, the seven marker is a little bit gummy, so you can see there's a little bit of shine to it, perhaps. That shininess is because there's some filth accumulating on the marker. But if I, you can use the colorless blender to kind of melt it, and it helps. It's not a perfect answer, but at least it gets rid of some of this stuff. The best answer would be to change up the tips of the markers, or at least clean the tip of the marker by soaking it in colorless blender. You can actually soak the tips in the colorless blender part of it, and that is actually good. You can't, don't do it in the alcohol, but they make colorless blender and they sell it in the bottle the refill for the colorless blender. And if you take an older tip and soak it in that, it will clean up the tip of the Copic a little bit. But not all tips can be rescued in this manner. Some of them are so far gone, it's not even worth the rescue. At that point, you just want to go ahead and replace it with a new felt tip, which they do sell rather cheaply. I think a pack of four of the marker tips is worth, I think, four bucks, maybe six. But even so, it's cheaper than buying a new one. Yeah, we need to talk again before Sunday. We have two options for Sunday, two options. What? What? Mm. I need a lot more of the poo. Not poo. <laughs> we need a lot more poo. Quick, go down to the zoo. Find the animal. We need more poo. I meant we need more comma. I mean, we need more period. Oh, poo. Period. <laughs> it didn't. It's not like I said we needed more poo. That was hilarious. I was like, no, we don't need more poo. Right now, my drawing's looking a little like poo. Hey, my dude. Big L, thanks for the subscription on Prime, my dude. What's funny is, I hate to say this, but I really like Prime subscriptions. Because you don't get... The thing is, Prime, guys, you already get a subscription for Twitch. And most people don't even use it. It's being thrown away. And I'm the kind of guy that likes to save stuff. So when I get a subscription from Prime, I think to myself, man, that dude just used his Prime. Oh, 
Can 16, Christine, thank you. Thank you so much. I'm gonna actually, I'm gonna take this moment to pause for a moment. My emotes, I'm gonna change them. I'm hoping I can change them before your subscription runs out. I'm gonna drop my logo. My logo is the tier one, right? I'm gonna drop that one actually. I wanna do a funnier, cooler emote because I don't feel like you can use that in channels. Like now that I've gotten my feet on the ground and I've gotten some Aceras designed, I feel like it's time to actually have better emotes that you guys can take with you as you go about your Twitch journey. Um, Cause I like the spicy one. The spicy one's not going anywhere. Hype, oh, Stellar's look so cool. And thank you for the hype. I need a hype one. I either, I'm either gonna do a hype or a pog. Cause if you remember the pog one, the original pog one went away and now they've got a new pog one, which is kind of cool. It's a Komodo dragon, I think it is. Um, oh, it did a water stain there. It's kind of neat. <laughs> it looks like a water, sorry, got sidetracked. I want to do different, a better, like I said, a better emote. I want to do, like you said, either a pog, my version of a pog, play of the game, or a, a hype or a cheer. So that you guys have, like I said, emotes you can take with you that you're proud of. You're not like, because you really can't use that Enos one anywhere except here. And now I'm seeing how other, because I thought it was rude to put other people's emotes in your chat. And now I'm like, it is certainly not rude. That is a badge of pride and wonder. And I take, I've taken, I don't know, I've taken Debbie Cat's um, little heart, her little crystal heart, everywhere I've gone, all across Twitch. And I'm like, it's not about that. There's some cool ones. And today in Debbie's stream, she had a, she has this thing where she can do emote only chat. And I hate it because I don't have good emotes to use. Um, or at least I don't know my emotes well enough to know which ones to use. But at the same time, I'm like, there are some wonderful emotes and people when they went emote only chat they started ripping out all these wonderful emotes from all these other channels and i'm like these are like collectible stamps why don't i have better ones is that neckies i knew it i was like i said that's one of neckies eyeballs isn't it it sure is there's some great ones and i feel like my enos logo it was functional it's cool it's nice it's not good it's not good for me using i'm gonna do one of, of my face cheering i think I'm going to keep the one I've got right now of my face, a little cartoon one that looks like Don't Starve, because I love Don't Starve, but I also use it in other rooms as a indicator of myself, but also as a, this is really wet, i got to let that dry, um, but also as a, because um, you can use it in the drop game. Oh, and I don't have the drop game active because of the, 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 um, what time is it? Oh, it's almost 11. Okay. I might stream for about 30 minutes more, maybe 40, I don't know. I might go till midnight depending on who else is on, because I, I want to raid somebody. But anyway, I usually have the drop game enabled. So if you do the drop game, you do exclamation you do exclamation point drop, and you put an I emote, and it drops th that down, which is in Maya's chant stream, it's in Debbie's stream, it's in now in my stream. See, look at all these great emotes, and you could be using them, and I need to have a better one. So I'm going to design a better one. My goal is for, that's another thing, I need to put that in my list, my phone list. I'm back. I felt I hit the wrong button. What button? Oh, pfft. you close the tab. I do that all the time. Like my goodness, I if I had a penny for every time I close the tab by pushing the wrong button. Oh my gosh, I wouldn't have to do any work anymore. Find one repair. Let's do. Let's erase out this one. I found the refill. Let's just scratch that out. Um, unlock command. Emote. I don't want to tell you what I have in mind, but it's something special. I think you guys would like it. I think you guys would be like, oh my gosh, I'm taking that with me everywhere I go. Or at least it's one you'd be proud to use. That's my goal. Because I didn't understand how to use emotes. And as I've, I've dived, because I've, I've been on Twitch, oh, four or five years now, I think. But, oh, thanks for the bits. Thanks for the bits, proud nerd girl. Also, I found out something new about OBS today, the other day. Thanks to Matt. That was really loud, sorry. But thanks to Matt, I found this really cool. Oh my gosh, I, I can't start it now. You know that we talked about it. I will use it. Um, if I don't get started on it Friday, I'll get started. Because I'm going to probably finish this up on Friday. But if I don't get finished on that Friday, I, mean, I don't know. I might be able to get this finished tonight. Okay. Can I start a poll? Can I do that here or is it annoying? See, I love, see, this is what I love about Devi's emotes are incredible. Like, I'm going to start, like, uh, her emote, her emotes are gorgeous. Like, look how, guys, 
by the way, Dance Christine is dropping emotes from Debbie Cat's channel. And I'm going to do a quick shout out to Debbie because she's amazing. She has been an amazing streamer. She does a lot of anime art, but even if you don't like anime style art, she does, in, like, watching her stream is such a joy. She really is a very kind person, a very nice person genuinely nice streamer human being i feel like she's been through a lot in the last couple of days like she's had to make a lot of very tough life decisions and not all of them have been fun she had to decide recently guys what content she wanted to keep creating and what had to go bye bye and i feel like it's a common and i could have misunderstood her i'm trying to understand because it's a very complicated situation i think i think it's both time and comfort um, oh, I don't know about that, Dance Christine. Thank you, though. Um, <laughs> I'm going to blush a little bit over here. You can't see because my camera's not on. But, um, but Debbie's just been like, oh, no, that's in the wrong place, Jay. <sighs> but I think it's both a combination of comfort and also, um, mm, thanks. That's so nice to say, Dance Christine. Really, it is. I, I don't know how to respond because I'm like, I'm choked up. I really am. Um, but like, I feel like it's a combination of, she doesn't feel comfortable creating certain content anymore. Like she was doing like videos of reviews and things and she just didn't feel comfortable doing it anymore. Um, and also I think it's time. Oh, I heard pounding. Oh, go, go, go check on that. Um, but, um, so it, it, it always makes me sad when people have to give up content because they didn't feel comfortable in a community. Not twitch community but just in the world community so it made me sad to hear that but at the same time i understand that there's you know we have to do what we do this again we talked about earlier self-preservation if she you know she has to do what makes herself feel good that's not right i clicked the wrong button <laughs> look at my photo reference i clicked on the wrong button I'm like that's not right at all but yeah so again i'm sad to see that she has to change up what she's been making but at the same time, even with all these life changes she's got going on that she's trying to figure out, she's trying to understand where she wants to go next. She's remained positive and, um, you know, open. If she if she feels uncomfortable, like if, if you know if someone in the channel hits a boundary, she'll be like, guys, you know, can we change the subject, please? Very gently, very very kind person. Like I said, it's very important that you're, you tell your friends your boundaries and feel safe. And. You do it in a nice way. You do it in a loving way. You don't say something, guys, I don't want to do this. No. You have to do it in a loving way because, you know, your your friends are there to, to help you. And one of the ways they can help you is by backing off when you when they've hit a wall that they shouldn't have hit. And, again, I think a lot of pe folks, they don't do it well. <laughs> and I think she expresses herself very clearly, very well. And, you know, you see some people that talk about their, their, well, their well-being and stuff and you're like, you, you question their genuinelessness sometimes. I mean, I try not to anymore, but you know, sometimes you do, you're like, uh, you can tell from her, it comes from a genuine place of, of actually, you know, having been in our journey. And she, she tells, you know, she kind of fills you in what's going on. And the thing is, she's a very, and the, the thing is, as entertaining as her streams are, she's also a very talented artist. Like as much as she may not give her credit, self credit sometimes, like the stuff she does looks easier than it actually is. Like, it's, it's like, oh, that's so simple. Anybody could do that. No, they couldn't. Look at the cleanliness of the line. Like, I, again, I can't get back. There was a day when she did like a, um, I want to say a penmanship test, but she was kind of showing off like, oh, this is how this program works. And she was like, look how it improves my quality of my line art. And she turned it off and the line art was exactly the same as when she had the helper on. And she was like, um, um, I guess I just got better from practice. And I'm like, no, it's because you learned how, it is true. She did learn how to get better by practice. But at the same time, she was also a lot better at her penmanship than she thought she was. So she actually surprised herself with how good she was at drawing. Live on the stream, I'm just sitting there going, see, you're better than you knew. Because <laughs> it's true. Um, you know, the aids and tools help you make your art. They don't make your art for you. And she's got a very good, talented way of, she's very talented with using a, a stylus. Cause it's not an easy thing. I mean, I'm, I'm an art, I've been an artist for 20 years now, and even I struggle with penmanship with a, with a, with a stylus. Again, you think, oh, it's just pick up the thing, draw on the thing. It makes it easier than mouse and keyboard. Don't get me wrong. 
But at the same time, it doesn't make digital drawing all of a sudden, ta-da, it's done, it's drawn, because I picked up a digital pen and it worked. It doesn't work like that. <laughs> oh, well, a lot of BRBs. I need a BRB command too. I need a BRB command. I really do. But again, I'm still adding stuff, guys. This is an organic growth process. There'll never, I don't think there'll ever be a time where like, I have arrived, my channel is perfection, and any one stroke will ruin it. No, get out of here with that. <laughs> It'll always be growing and evolving to match whatever I feel like the channel needs to do. Like right now, I feel like I need a, a BRB command. Because I think that would help people. Because it's kind of, I never understood like how much, because I'm like, why would people care about this stuff? And then I go to other people's channels, I'm like, oh man, that's so cool, and they've got this other thing. And I'm the first person to come back to my own channel, and go like, but why would anybody want that, though? And I'm the first person to be cheering when I have access to it. Like, if I had a BRB command, I'd be like, there's a BRB command, I'm typing BRB, right? And it's like, I'm the first person to go, but isn't that just a waste of people's time if I program that in? But it's the kind of thing I enjoy. So it's funny, I, I will build this stuff to be, you know, um, I'll build this stuff to appeal to this pretend audience instead of to me, you know, like, what would I want? You know, I'm like, I think about, well, you know, I would like that, but why would anybody else want that? Because other people like what I like too. <laughs> you know, and that's the funny part. Like I will sit there and I'll, I will say, you know, that's not, you know, important enough to put as a command. That's not cool enough to be a part of the channel and I won't put it in. And then, I'll go back and I'll see it in other channels. I'm like, oh, I love that feature. It's so stupid but and so pointless, but gosh, I love it. Then why am I not adding it to my channel? Like, the stuff that appeals to me is the same stuff that appeals to other people too. And that's one of the things I struggled with. I, I, I almost, how do I put this? I struggled with almost with trying to make too important of content and just forgetting the silliness. Like, again, do I need a BRB command? No. No channel needs that, but it's just so fun to be able to put that in there and see some goofy script come up. Um, it's almost like it's Overwatch. They made this whole complex Blizzard made this whole complex game, game. I think it was called Titanfall originally, and it had all these progression systems and all these things. And they got done. They're like, "This is boring. This is so stupidly boring. Why do we make this game? It's dumb. It's boring. It's too many stats. Who cares?" And they said, well, how do we fix it? We've spent all this time and we kind of like tra the Tracer class. So, I mean, it's not like the game is completely scrappable, but you know, we should probably scrap good chunks of it. Right, okay, so we'll keep, we'll keep the Tracer class and we'll name her Tracer. So we'll go from being, calling her a class, the Tracer class, to making her an actual character. And I put my mic right on my drawing so I couldn't move my drawing. That was a fail. Um, so they switched Tracer from a character, to, I mean, from a class to a person. And then I said, well, what do we do to make Overwatch fun? And I said, okay, well, um, that's what we'll do. We'll make everything, we'll focus on everything fun. We'll make everything fun. Okay, so they're like, okay, wouldn't it be fun if we had floating cars? Because floating cars are fun. And they said, yeah, floating cars are fun. New rule, all cars in Overwatch worlds float. Done, because they're fun. Immediately, they're just like, okay, all cars float in Overwatch. That, there was no new rule immediately, which is hilarious because there's tires everywhere in Overwatch, but all cars float. One more time again, guys. All cars in the Overwatch world float, and yet there's tires in the... In the there's tires in... Um, there's a tire swing in Gibraltar. There are tires in a garage somewhere. Uh, I want to say it's either in London or in... Um, what's the name of that map? In Oasis. I think there's tires in Oasis, too. So it's like, wait a second, how do we have tires, but there's no cars that actually use tires? Who knows? Welcome to the world of Overwatch. I'm just pumping in, piping in the darkest darks. Just punching in the darkest darks real quick. I mean, it's not like these darkest darks can be erased out if they're too dark, but I'd rather not have to go back and hit them again. Like, I'd rather not have to make a second pass to get rid of strong, you know, two lines that are too strong.
And also, too, I think that the camera washes out a lot of it, too. Like, I'm like, oh my gosh, it's so boring. It's like, no, it only looks boring because, oh, that's better. It looks good on the camera, though. That's the good news. Now, oh, I need to go to 7, don't I? Where's my 7 marker? W7. I see W6, but oh, it's W7. Okay, sharp up that line a little bit. There we go, like that. breaking my cardinal rule here guys cardinal rule is rainbows curve this way not the other way okay there we go now i'm gonna take the um colorless blender making all kinds of weird gestures here thank goodness <laughs> my camera's not on do all these weird villain hand gestures I'm like <laughs> put my hand up y'all sorry if i'm being a little extra tonight i'm kind of a, I'm kind of in good spirits tonight Kind of in some really good spirits. A lot of tension from last week kind of melted away today, which is a good thing. Um, I talked to my manager about some stuff that was important. B93, perfect. It, I need to clear the air about some stuff. Nothing bad, just, you know, just kind of like housekeeping stuff. You know, like, hey, I didn't like this. This was not, you know, that didn't make me happy. This is what's going on and I'm not happy about this. And my manager told me about some things. She's like, I wish you'd improve this. And I'm really proud of you for doing this. And I'm like, oh. It's one, it's another thing, you know, it's it's so important. I'm not saying I need my manager's validation, but oh my gosh, it's so cool when you're at work and you hear somebody say, you're doing a good job on this. Is there things you can improve? Of course, we'll work on those. I know you will. But, you know, this is doing well, and I'm proud of you for that. And keep that up, because you're doing good. That makes me happy. Like, I'm like, I'm not a total screw-up. Sometimes it's nice to hear that, you know, that you're doing a good job. I'm one of those people that would I would rather hear I'm doing a good job than necessarily get paid extra money. Because I'm like, sometimes it's just stumbling in the dark. You know, you don't know if you're doing the right thing or not. And you're like, sometimes it's just helpful to hear somebody say, you're doing the right thing. Keep it up. I'm trying to make sure I got dark enough values on here. Might need to go into a C2. A C1? Let's try a C1. Remember, guys, I am packing the C4. C4. Fire in the hole. Give me my C1. Here we go. Try and get some of these white, this white, very white looking values punched up a little bit because there's a lot of white paper and I'm not, I don't care for that, but like right there. Just like the sharpest parts of the lid need to be kind of. That's not so bad. So cute. Okay, I need to do the other hand now. <laughs> the problem is the other hand is super blurry, so I'm like, Eesh. I gotta keep everything kind of wet when I do that. Okay, the other thing is too, I need to go ahead and go into this color here and do that really quick. And I need a sandy brown, a light sandy brown. E13, is that a sandy brown we can use? E53, E53, guys. Paging E53, I found the exact color I want. See, this is why you have the touch swatches on the side, because it's a color sometimes you would never predict would be the right one. You're like, oh, it's E53. E53. And if um, our discussions earlier can continue about markers, sometimes it's just helpful to have... Um, to simplify to get a, full, a fuller color range. Like, it doesn't matter if you've got every single color. E53. Oh, by the way, Matt, I'm still remembering what you what you did. I will not forget that you did me that did me that drawing, that you redeemed those channel points. Of course, I can't get started on tonight, as you know, but you knew that. That's why you redeemed them, because you knew it wouldn't be tonight. There's E53 hiding in the corner. Um, you know, simplify your drawing so that you don't have to worry about too much about the different colors. 
but when you actually get more of a color range, then start expanding some more. You know, like like I did with the D Devontees drawing I showed you guys earlier in stream. You don't have to start off with all the full range of colors, but you know, obviously, start branching out more and more as you get more and more colors. Branch out more and more. I'm gonna switch to the brush tip because it's a little bit more softer in its lines. And <laughs> making all these little weird noises. So they've got that. Okay. Much cooler. There we go. So that ear really pumps now. I might rotate it just so I can get a better view of the values, which I will do right now. Ooh, that's looking really good now, value wise. Let's rotate the original reference though. Image rotate 180 degrees. Again, I wish I could show you that, but I gotta kind of have it off camera while I get everything all done. Yeah, there's a lot more value I need in some of these places. One thing I need to do is I need to go ahead and put this in here. Scoot some of this value in here like this. There we go. Much, much better. One of my beard hairs, beard hairs fell on the drawing. Not that there's anything wrong with that. It just obscures what I'm seeing. I'm like, why is there a line on my drawing? Oh, that's not a line. That's my hair that fell across it. So it won't harm the drawing or anything like that. It just looks annoying. Okay, so we got that done. So there's that done. And also we need to kind of sneak this up here. Okay, there's a little bit of a glitch there, a little bit of an error there, but no one's gonna notice that again. It's one of those little things, it's like, oh, a little, a little piece of it could have gone a little bit further to the right. And it's like, nah, who cares if every wrinkle isn't portrayed correctly in the garment? And it's like, we're not here to look at this robe of this character. We're here, the robe is part of the set dressing. So as long as it's not commanding for attention, as long as it's rendered mostly okay, you're never gonna know any like inaccuracies with the reference because if the accuracy of the reference doesn't really matter when it comes to the robe. The robe is just there to, again, provide set dressing so that the, again, it will look like, it'll, it'll, again, we're not gonna recognize a portrait of the robe. We're gonna look at the, look at the character. Oh, that needs to be brought up a lot more, doesn't it? Oof. There we go. There we go. A little distracted with getting my cupcakes done. I have a few more minutes, but lots tomorrow. <laughs> a few more minutes. I, I'm here a few more minutes, but I have lots to do tomorrow. Okay. Okay, fair enough. I'm just glad you dropped in. I, I don't text you anymore for one reason, because I don't want to... I don't want to overwhelm you. I know you know what my schedule is. It's coming along really good. I'm going to be boastful. Sorry. <laughs> humble, humble, humility. But I mean, I, I, I figured you were probably busy with work and I know bit work has been keeping you pretty, pretty busy and hectic. Like you're not always able to tune in because you've got sleep and stuff to do for work. And I know that and I'm not, like I said, I'm not upset about that. That's I'm just like, I try not to be, you know, hey, tune in, I'm on. Cause I know you got, like I said, a lot going on. Hey, by the way, I meant to ask you, um, did you get the email email that doesn't bother me at all? Okay. Well, I'll still, I guess I'll message you then. I just didn't want, like I said, I don't want to overwhelm you with like, Hey, do all this other things that you're, you got 15, 15,000 other things. So pay attention to me over here too. I'm needy. Honestly, if one friend of mine says, Hey, I'm needy. Give me attention. I'm like, you're wonderful. <laughs> I'm the kind of person that validates when people are like, I'm feeling needy right now. Please, please validate that need. I'm like, okay, you're a wonderful person. I'm glad to know you. I'm glad we're friends. Maybe not the healthiest thing to do, but I can't help it. I'm like, my friend needs my help and my validation. I'm going to validate them in any way they want. Because I'm a big empathizing wuss. <laughs> um, I'm so forgetful these days. I think COVID messed with my memory. At least I'm blaming on that. 
No one will ever question that. You just say, COVID made me do it. The Rona. I blame the Rona. And you know what? People are like, oh, you had Corona? Are you okay? No one's going to judge you. No one had better judge you. It'll be your pass for the rest of your life. And I'm hope you, I hope you can use it for the rest of your life. <laughs> no judgments. I'll be like, yep. She had the Rona. Leave her alone. Oh, man. Didn't you hear how coronavirus... And it affects the memory centers of your brain. You, you'd understand that if you had it. Thank God you never had coronavirus. If you'd had it, you would have experienced the same memory losses. Thank God you didn't get it. Oh, that's what I'd be telling people. <laughs> you know how they tell you about the, the, taste, the, the, the loss of taste? What they don't tell you is the loss of your memory is even worse. And they don't talk about that on the news, do they? No, they don't because it's, the it's the unseen side of COVID. I shouldn't kid, though. I mean, I can kid. What am I saying? I can kid because you've been through it. So, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm not trying to insult COVID people, people that have been through COVID. I'm trying to give you, I'm trying to give you a blessing in the, in the negative. <laughs> I did get the email, she says. You left me wanting. I was hoping to work on some stuff these few days offish. Do you like it, though? That was my question. I might change the lettering in the back of it. If I do ever change the lettering of it or improve anything, I'll send you the updated version. I figure as big as it is, you'll never know if the letters are slightly wonky because you'll never see it that big. But if I'm like, oh, I don't like it, I can always make it and change it and send it to you and you can always update it. And no one will ever know because it'll just update from that point forward. So it's not like you have to delete it, re-upload. You just simply upload the new one. It's like, oh... I'll replace this with this, and it doesn't care what, if how close it was to the first one. It'll just replace it, and not it, like it never, like the first one never happened. So, this song doesn't sound like I've got. I want candy, not even a little bit. He's the one that's so sweet. Uh, sorry, it's not. I want candy, is it? It's not. I, I meant to tell you guys, it's not. I want candy. I should have warned you, shouldn't I? I should have warned you guys. It's not I want candy. Oh, you you love them. Okay, good. I mean, I'm still learning how to make emotes, so I'm okay with that. I'm like, oh, I'm still learning. But I'm learning a lot from watching a lot of my... I hate to say it, but I don't know why I hate to say it. I guess it's just because I know a lot of times the, the anime art community gets a lot of hate. But the truth is... Um, that's how the emotes look. That's the style of them. So I've been watching a lot of anime art streamers to learn how to do this style better, how to render better. I've learned so much from watching a lot of folks. Mostly Debbie Cat, because she's pretty cool. I've learned a little bit from Tasty Peach. Um, she does some cool streams. Although her streams can be very high energy, very random, and sometimes overwhelming sometimes. Um, but Riss is an amazing streamer too. She does amazing art. She'll, like her community will come up with a crazy, um, uh, not emote, but like a crazy meme. And then next thing you know, she's drawing that crazy meme and it's going on shirts. And I've honestly seen, um, I think it was Atomic Kawaii. I was in her channel. I was like, that's a Tasty Peach shirt. I remember when she made that meme. I was there that day she streamed when she made that meme into a t-shirt. <laughs> so, you know, it's these funny things like she'll just randomly, like if, if the community comes up with a random meme, it becomes a t-shirt. So it's a very high energy stream. And she's also, like I said, a very creative person. Like, just watching her create stuff is like, oh, how do you, like, I envy her ability to just take a meme and just craft a stupid shirt out of it. Like, I don't mean stupid as in, like, bad. I mean stupid as in, like, I admire her ability to to play a humor all the way to the end. I wish I had that kind of guts. Like, I'm always like, it's not really meaningful, though. And then she's like, random meme, t-shirt now. <laughs> and I'm like, I wish I had that. Bra I'm going to say bravery because I'm almost making it sound like she's foolish. She's not foolish. She's very wise in her, her time management that she can just take time, make an, a, a t-shirt based on a community meme, and go forward. Like, I admire that so much. Like, I'm the kind of person like, no, we don't want to do that. I get very sheltered and very cautious. And she's not cautious. And that's one of those things that makes her such a good streamer. She's not cautious. She goes headfirst into it. And it always works. Let me see. It's being stupid because I didn't click on the window. OBS, you want me to click on you, don't you? You want your, you want my attention now. Hey, Matt. Okay, sorry. I love. I, I wasn't looking for validation. But validate me, Sarah. Validate me, please. No, I really wasn't looking for validation. But your, your compliment 
is appreciated because I, I I go through self doubt, believe it or not, guys. I know you might look. Why do you go through self doubt? Your art's amazing. We all go through that. I mean, I'm like, is it good enough though? Because <laughs> I, mean, I go through less of it now. I know my stuff can be good. Do I think everything I've ever done is good? Not as much, but I know I do good work sometimes. <laughs> like I've come to accept the fact that I sometimes do good work. I might not believe everything I do is my best work. Like, for example, the drawing of Lindsay, I know that's one of my best pieces I've ever done. The drawing I did of um, Janelle, the one with the in front of the plane, I know that's one of the best things I've ever done. Do I think this is the best thing I've ever done? We'll we'll get there. <laughs> we will get there eventually. Um, what was the color I needed? I needed YR40. Yeah, YR40 is pretty good. Or is it 07? It's 07. YR40. Who taught you to read upside down? That was awful, Jay. That was so bad. Why R40? It's 07, silly. All right, so Matt and, Matt and uh, Sarah said hello to each other. Sup, nerd girl, just relaxing before I head to bed, said proud nerd girl. Getting ready to kill some zombies with some friends. With some friends here in a bit. The space went in a weird place. Uh, you always you always sleeping, LOL, JK. So, Jason, how'd you like that janky overlay? I don't know. I kind of rather thought it was good. Um, I don't think it was that janky. I doubt that, Jason. Doubt that. Oh, my artwork. Yeah. Well, thank you. Um, yeah. I'm loving Baby Yoda. Thank you, Sarah. Um, again, I'm not saying these things. I'm not saying these things for validation. I would tell you guys, hey, guys, um, I'm feeling a little lack of self-confident. But, no, it's true, though. I think a lot of artists, I think almost all artists go through... Unless they're a narcissist. I think all artists go through what's called imposter syndrome. They feel like, you know, because they see how what they did to make it. And they're like, ugh, I am, um, you know, I'm not really an artist because I didn't do it this way or that way or this other way. So I'm not really a good artist. And they, and they like I said, they imposter that syndrome themselves out of true happiness of their own completion of their own work. C3, where are you? There we go. Um, I'm going to throw some gray in this too. Just some cools to kind of change the shadows. That was the right choice, but I think I need to go one shade darker. Looking for that C4. Fire in the hole! I found it. Um, just to add some different, like, cool shade, sh shadings here. Shorter strokes, otherwise it doesn't look quite right. There we go. Much better. Yeah, it's better. Because this, this piece is a little bit cooler. This front part. I think it's because it's bouncing off the lights off of there. And this is warmer because it's getting the orange of the shell. So it's picking up a lot of the warmth in there. So, let's go to two, I think. One gray two. Three, four. Colors blender C70. The, sure, the one color I'm looking for is W2. And it was all hidden in, hidden in the... And then it was hidden out there in the poop decks. The dreaded butch shark. Sorry, it was a, that's a sign on the happiness cartoon, the butt shark. I think you mentioned the other night. What? In, oh, whoa, 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 whoa. I'm missing a whole conversation here. I'm going to put you guys on slow chat so I can read everything. Um, let me be Yoda. Did you tell Nerd Girl about future awesomeness? I did not yet. But you said that. I think you told me. I, well, I can't spoil I can't spoil it for him. Yes, you can. You can spoil it for him. Um, I did. I think you mentioned it the other night. Yeah, please talk to her about it. That's totally okay. <laughs> oh, this is something new. Okay, I'm intrigued. Yeah, definitely. Please talk about that. because I. Let me see if I can get this right. Basically, we. Um, and I don't want to speak for Matt because it's Matt's, Matt's kind of spearheading this. I'm going to be completely honest. Matt spearheads the show, our, our podcast we do together, this and that with Jason and Matt. He spearheads a lot. Of it. Most of it is his ideas. I'm happy along for the ride. My brain sometimes doesn't pick up on things to do that are awesome. And he's like, this would be awesome if we did this thing together. And I'm like, you're probably right. And so I signed up for it. I'm like, let him through the commitment. And Matt's like, don't worry. It will be that not that much of a big, big commitment. He was right. So I'm like, okay, cool. And so Matt was like, we should do this other thing. And I'm like, I don't know. He's like, don't worry. It won't be anything big and special. It'll just be us doing things chilling. He was right once again. Um, so I think the idea is, and forgive me if I'm wrong, Matt, the idea is that we can have Sarah on the show. Wasn't that the discussion we had? If it wasn't, then nothing ever happened. Look into the neuralizer and 
blink and think about something happy. That's what I thought the podcast, right? Maybe I shouldn't say anything. No, no, no. This is this is a free space. You can talk about all you want unless you're talking about something that's not supposed to be talked about in front of people, which is not this. Now, if there's something you plan about talking about in front of people, um, probably don't. But I think this isn't a secret because, again, the podcast isn't released yet. It's in production. So anything we talk about is totally fine. It's not a secret. It's not like we're famous and we need to keep this like under N NDAs. I mean, maybe Matt's famous. I, I, I didn't think he was that famous enough to hide it under an NDA. I mean, he's well known in certain circles, but I don't know if it's NDA worthy. It's not like the mass singer where we have to hide our identities. That would be part of it. And we, we're going to do a live stream, live stream. I know you said stream. I just want to say stream, live stream podcast, which would be fun. Cause we talked about that too. The ease of editing, <laughs> the ease of editing something that doesn't need to be edited because it's live. Oh, the joys. That would be amazing. I think I need a C4 on that, on that line. I may have already done C4 on this particular shadow and it didn't take. Oh, that's pretty good. Okay, there we go. Boink. Let's do that. Okay, there we go. I'm kind of sculpting it out slowly and I think it's coming along quite well. I, again, I love the fact that Baby Yoda is in fact an actual real life sculpture. That makes me happy, like beyond happy. Okay, I'm gonna need to throw some zero on this blender on this. This is kind of looking grainy in the background and that's fine. Cause it is just a background. I don't want it to look like hot garbage though, so. I think this is drying out. It is kind of drying out. We're gonna hold off on that real quick. We're gonna blend it a little bit later on, see if we can, well, yeah, we're gonna let it, the, the paper's buckling. So let's move on to the hand real quick. We can go for longer times. Oh, those people that get us out or are, are out there, we shall call them, we shall call them to us. Okay, people don't get us only, well, that's the thing. See, that's the thing I've learned a lot on Twitch, Sarah, all kidding aside. Um, I want to find people who get us. The thing is, the world is a much larger place, especially when you go on Twitch. So, having said all this, we're gonna find you're gonna find like minded or at least sympathetic people. I wouldn't say necessarily like minded, I don't know anybody's like minded. I can't even be like minded with myself from two different days. So, like minded, that's a hard stretch. Similar minded, well, it depends on how like minded you mean. Like, hive mentality, you know, we are the Borg. Resistance is futile. No, you're not going to find it, uh, like a Borg assimilation level of sameness, which would be kind of scary, honestly, to be to be honest anyway. But you will, you can find a lot of folks that have maybe similar interests and similar enthusiasm for certain topics. I feel like that exists on Twitch quite commonly. And again, people, some people are going to watch to be entertained and some folks are going to be watching because like, man, I get those people. I get them. I'm one of them. Because that happens too. Like, I remember when I first went to Comic-Con. <laughs> when I went to SC, um, um, what was it? Heroes Con, my first ever convention. And I remember looking around and I was like, I saw all the nerds and all the squares and all the geeks. And I was like, my people. I have arrived. <laughs> like, I honestly, like, I've never felt like I, I don't know. It just, it was, it was like a, a feeling of, thank God I finally found a group of people that are just pretty similar to me, you know? I think that happens with um, on Twitch too. It takes a minute. It takes a minute for to find people that are doing the same things. What are you talking about over here? I we shall ignite the nerd candle and let us light. Oh, let me let me do it again. We shall ignite the nerd candle and let its light break through the cosmos, calling to them to come and find their home. I had to read that very dramatically, I think. I think it was worth it. And there was much drinking and rejoicing. It's pretty close, you know what I mean? Yeah, I think I'm gonna need one more stream to polish it. Like, it's it's good, but it needs to be polished. Boing, 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 boing. Okay, there's nothing there. So I don't want it to be rough. I want it to be polished. And right now it's a little rough in places. And plus I gotta do the white of the of the ears and stuff. The background's a little this is a little rough, but I mean I can I can I can work with I can work at that. 
And also, I'm going to trim it. Like, the trim is, like, right here. Where's the trim mark? Right there's one corner. Where's the other edge? <laughs> I've lost track of it. There's one, there's one. Okay, let me rotate this again so I can see what I'm looking at here. You're a non-corporeal being. You are the Cisco. The Cisco is persistent. The Cisco is obstinate. We are of Bajor. You are of Bajor. You are the Cisco. So if you're going to say you're non-corporeal, I'm going to talk to you like you're a prophet, okay, from Deep Space Nine. Okay, let me see. We can actually get together since we live close together. That would be awesome. Um, Lalas is back, but she got more. She didn't even know what she got herself into when she came back. Our banner shall reign supreme throughout the providences. We shall be a beacon of hope and geekiness. A live podcast is one of our rooms. I am a non I'm a non-corporeal being. Like I said, it's gonna be funny. Um, oh, I also need to do subscriber badges. Poopy poop. I got a lot to do. I um, subdue that side of me because people look at me funny. You get used to it, Sarah. You get used to it. I know you're older than me, but you get used to it. <laughs> you're only slightly older than me, not by much. Matt's losing. Haha, ha, that could be an option. I think this Sunday we 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 be using Streamyard. Wait, let me see if I've got this correctly. What you're saying is your podcast brings all the people to StreamYard. And they like, I'd have to charge because this podcast is so large. I mean, am I the younger? Well, I'm not going to give away Sarah's age, but I am 39. And Sarah is slightly older than me. Not by much, not by much. We're not talking like ages. I would have bet she was younger than me, to be honest, when I, when I, when I knew her. Like, I honestly thought she was... A few years my junior honestly and I forget where that puts you Matt I think you are the child I think you are the baby so respect your elders son you best show some respect son and on that note I think I, I think you are. I'm the oldest. I'm a tad younger than you. Okay. Oh, wow. Oh, okay. Well, we're all pretty much contemporary. Will I obtain the order of 38 in March? I'll be 38 in July. I'll be 40 in March. 4-0. And I think COVID's going to kill my 40th birthday, guys. I am. I have the sad about that. I really do have the sad about that. I really wish I could have a big bash, but I don't think it's, it's not looking too good, folks. January wasn't looking good, and February ain't looking too dang good either. And I has I has the big sad because COVID started right around my birthday last year, March 20. It didn't start there, but I mean that's when people were like, "Oh shoot, that's coming over here, and that's gonna be a thing, and we need to lock down so we don't get spread the germ." We need to spread the word to not spread the germ, and then next thing you know, everything's on lockdown. So my birthday went called, and now a year later, it's gonna kill my 40th birthday probably. I don't mean to be depressing, guys. I don't mean depressing. Natalie's March 27th. I am the 20th. Look how awesome we are. We should create a guild. I wish I had a voice echo. I could put that on there. A guild. Okay, I'm being really extra cheesy tonight, guys. This is like the cheesy crust pizza. There's extra cheese. You just have to look for it. And you don't have to look too hard. You just take a bite in the show. <laughs> you just find catching up with me. Oh, my age is caught up with me already. It has snuck up behind me, hit me with a club, and it's not been good. <laughs> Although, I'm still proud I can ride bikes with my wife. She's about what? She's three years my junior? I'm robbing the cradle here, folks. Four years my junior. And she's in bed. I'm looking for my seat. Okay, this one... This one always makes me think of Run, Lola, Run. And man, I want to go back and watch that movie again. It's a weird movie, guys. If you've never seen Lola Rent, is it's rendered in the German, which is I think Lola Runs or Lola Lola Running. It's an interesting film. It's all in German. 
it the producer of the soundtrack is also the director of the film who's also the boyfriend of the star who also is on the soundtrack yeah basically between Tom Tyker and his then girlfriend uh, Franca Patant I'm probably saying they're butchering their names completely horribly awfully bad between the two of them they worked on the soundtrack the writing the acting the directing the producing there's other people involved don't get me wrong but you know between the two of them they had you know he wrote a lot of the songs she vocalized in a lot of the songs not sang but you know she was she talked in them in English um which is crazy because the film's in German the songs are in English but I think they were like wait a second we can go for universal appeal if we have songs in English and people want to understand why we have songs in English with the dialogues all in German it's subtitled it's, it's good it's good it's an action film um it's a very short action film and it's very compact it's cool uh, but I'm the 20th of birthday, by the way. Sorry. I got sidetracked talking about Uber Rent, which I want to watch again. I got it on DVD. It's just, it's an 80 minute film and it's so short and compact and it's crazy. It is completely bonkers. I mean, it's about this, this basically, long story short, it's about this woman who's, who's, um, whose boyfriend, who works for a, a local gangster, mobster, misplaces 20, uh, 200,000 Deutschmark, which is about $20,000 American, I think. But the thing is, He's the kind of guy that if you misplace a pack of cigarettes, he'll beat your head in. So he's like, $20,000 I've just lost? I'm a dead man. And she's like, don't worry, don't worry, I'll find the money. He's like, you know, I'm calling from a phone booth right now, and there's a grocery store right across the street. I could just rob that and get $20,000. And she's like, are you crazy? He's like, it's better than dying. And she's like, I will find $20,000 in 20 minutes. Do not rob that grocery store under any circumstances. I'm coming there with the money. And then she starts running through Berlin to go find the money. Um, so it's, like I said, it's very adrenaline packed and action packed. So again, it basically unfolds in three alternate realities. And each version of it has its own little twist. And you learn stuff from the other ones where you're like, oh, so that's what happened the other time. Or, Oh, that's why that character was over there doing this thing that one time. Because you learn different things in the different realities, which is pretty cool. And it's weird because it's one of the few alternate reality ones where they talk about different alternate realities where it seems like they learn from, it's almost like a video game mentality. They learn from previous mistakes. Like there's one time where I forget one of the characters is like, nope, not this time. And you're, and you're like, what is that? Why, what do you mean no, not this time? They're literally saying this isn't the time, this isn't the reality in which we in which everything ends happily. They knew it. One of the characters know it's like, nope, this isn't the one. Never mind. And you're like, it's like they already know that this run, it's like almost like I said, it's treated like a run of a video game. And they know that it's they this run wasn't the right one. It's like, oh, this it. This isn't the time. Maybe next time. So it's really weird that it's it's treated like almost like they know the characters in the in the movie know that it didn't work. It didn't it's not it's about to not work out. Stellar and I anniversary is March 22nd, two days after my birthday. Happy early birthday to everyone. Happy early birthday indeed. It says chat pause due to scroll and I can't scroll. Well, wow. Oh, you can't let that happen. Not except for me. You have to be creative. My 40th birthday was epic. The age was forced upon me, but it will not break me. My age was forced upon me, but it will not break me. Its fire will only harden and strengthen me. How do you read it like that, man? True facts, man. Age is just a number. True fact about that. I was 30. I was depressed. I hit 31, I did more in 31 than I did from 20 to 30. I did more in my 31st year than I did in an entire decade. Age is just a number, it is what you make of it. I don't know why I'm typing like this. Go with it, my man, just go with it. Wow, I've already, I've already rendered away another 40 minutes. Lala says, all right, I gotta get the kids to bed, wake up early even though they sleep in. Have a great night, everyone. Good night, everybody. Oh, so just a poll. I'm sorry, I didn't even see you redeem that. I'm so sorry, it's in there though. Um, I didn't mean to redeem that. Oh, you didn't mean to redeem that. I, you see, I would... Can I give channel points back? I don't think I can give channel points back. I don't know. I don't know if I can do this. Let me see if this works. I'm gonna try. Give. Give. I don't know, girl. A thousand. Let's see if it does that. Unrecognized command. Yeah, I'll have to look at that. The thing is, I'm not even worried about it though. I think you've probably got enough channel points that a thousand isn't going to make a dent. <laughs> I think at this point, you've lurked so much, you probably could own my channel. <laughs> like you could, I can literally have a chat command, own my channel. You could own Jason Eno's art for just twenty, 
500,000 channel points. And you're like, I can buy it twice over. Congratulations, Jason. Your stream is mine now. Don't even worry about it. Okay. I, I thought I knew a command for that, but I think I only know the command for like channel points. Um, like, because like, um, there's two levels of points, and I don't have the other one because it's, uh, it's a Streamlabs thing, and I have stream elements. Oh, no wonder one of them is filled. I have both my colorless blenders out on the thing. I keep grabbing different ones intermittently. All right. Oh, poopy, poopy, poopy. I'm looking for my C. Oh, here we go. C0. <gasps> oh, I thought it was going to fall off the table, and it would have been a horrific crash at 11.40 at night. My poor wife would have woke up with a start. She's a very light sleeper, I mean. And fun fact, she talks in her sleep. Maybe that's not such a fun fact, but she does talk in her sleep. And it can be a little alarming, because I was coming upstairs one night after watching Twitch and playing video games downstairs, and I came upstairs, and I hear Arlene going, I have to go to work. I have to go to school. I said, honey, it's Saturday. But I have to go to school. Sweetie, it's, it's Saturday. <laughs> it's Saturday. <laughs> no, you don't have to go to school. But she was, like, out of it, poor thing. She just, I said, she just, it's just crazy. Let's see what I got here. Shame. Don't worry about it. Okay, BRB. Burb. I need a BRB burb. A beerb. I like I like calling burbs birds beerbs. I like calling birds beerbs. B I R B. You've seen that before? It's a beerb. Like this, a beerb. Do, 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 do. do I have um, Nekatija's little parrot, Zazu? I don't know if I uh, I was gifted in a subscription, but I think it ran out. I want to, uh, Cassidy. Somebody gifted me a subscription to Cassidy. Heck. Like sometimes I, I had a bunch of subscriptions last year, last year, last month. Like I, I visited, I looked at a bunch of streams and like I had like five different concurrently running subscriptions. away I think we've lost music for tonight guys I've lost 90 frames let me see if I can get this right I'm trying to see if I can recalibrate this to headphones and then back to fine it's not playing it's not playing music Okay, I'm gonna try to restart my iTunes. I'm about ready to wrap up though, because I'm, I'm, it's getting late. It's 11:46. It's a lot later than I thought it was. Yeah, we lost some because I, my lanky body pulled the cord out of the microphone's base, and the effect of that is, is it basically just wipes out the entire microphone, believe it or not. Um, so believe it or not, Lanky Jones over here pulled the cord by crossing his legs for a brief moment, and. Contrary to what you might think, it can actually be detrimental to your sound if you pull out the cord of your microphone. <laughs> Although I tend to think y'all know that that's probably detrimental to the sound. It's just a guess, but I think that's true. I think you guys know that if you pull out your microphone cord, it's not good for your broadcast, right? I think we can all say that safely say that, yeah, you all know that. So lesson learned, guys, don't pull out the cord of your microphone. Not to say that yours truly did it on purpose, because he didn't. Can you all hear me? By the way, if you can hear me now, please put a message in chat to let me know that the sound is, in fact, back reinstated. Type in a message, anything. I'm giving you 30 seconds. So that I can make sure. Because it takes a minute to type in here. Can you all hear now? You're really going to make me do this, aren't you, Sarah? You don't let me pull up my own stream, aren't you? Oh, okay, it's on. Good. I'm like, you're really going to make me pull up my own stream and watch it on my own phone, aren't you? There we go. I'm kind of just going through and darkening some of the values up so it's, you know, a little bit more covered. Right now it's kind of a pale, so I want to build up some more of the values. So kind of going back in and like, okay, this needs to be a little bit more 
colored in. This needs to be a little more colored in. Okay, I need cool gray zero. Where are you? There you go. No, it's C1. C2, C3. Where's C0? I know I have C0 floating around. That's it, isn't it? Ha! Sniped it. Try not to leave any part of the paper barely covered. There we go. Looking pretty good now. Looking pretty good. I am going to, like I said, I'm getting close to wrapping up because I'm getting tired. I have to work tomorrow. I want to do some things before I go to bed. Plus, it's getting to the point where it's like, it's getting a long stream. It's like, what? Stream. Yeah, let's go raid somebody. I'm at a stopping point. Let's go raid somebody. Let's actually, do I want to move these markers? No, I'll leave them out because I'm not going to touch them. Um, so let's let's do the the stopping point. I, I need to scoot this over here so I can. I'm going to take the the microphone off camera so that um, if I need to move the microphone and use it for other things, I can do that. Um, because I can just reinstate it. You'll never know the difference. I want him. I'm loving it. <laughs> I'm probably going to make prints of it because he's coming along quite well. I must say. I'm not trying to be boastful. Um, I know what I'm, again. I know what I'm capable of, but I'm getting. I'm pleased with him. And when I'm pleased with him, that means it's a good thing. That means oh, let me take a look at it. Okay, good. So when I, oh, let me get the markers off of the drawing so that if the markers shift, it won't see them. Good, because I need to take a, a quick photo, guys. Let me switch to the regular mode. Now that we're at a stopping point. Also, too, can I drop a stream marker? How do I drop a stream marker? Oh, I do that on my phone. Somebody told me you can drop a stream marker. Right, it's so cute. Like, he his ability to um. It, I'm glad they made him a puppet. Like, the original Yoda, portrayed by Frank Oz. If you all know your Star Wars, I'm gonna switch to main camera. By the way, sorry. Give me a second. Um, where is it? And you might lose music for a second because I have to boot up my. Um, I have to boot up my. Um, I'll do this real quick. I have to boot up my actual. Um, oh, that's bad. That's dumb and bad. I have to boot up my actual internet so I can do the switch. Mm, Sarah, Sarah, I was going to do a giveaway of the actual drawing and have prints on hand, but that was kind of a spoiler. Shh, don't tell nobody. I don't know how I'm going to do the giveaway yet, but I do want to do a giveaway and, um, you know, give away the actual original because I think that'd be cooler, you know, but no, that was exactly what I was thinking. You read my mind on that. Completely read my mind on that. By the way, thanks for the bits, by the way. I don't think I properly thanked you for the bits. I'm going to reduce the desktop audio because I need to start up my, um, my, um, you tell me if, if you can hear the music anymore. Can you hear the music anymore? What's Debbie up to? I'd read Debbie, but I think she's, oh, she's hosting somebody. She's off. She's off for the night. Okay. Oh, I moved the pens. That's going to stink. I just realized I moved them up. Okay. Who's on? Anybody on? I mean, tons of people are on. Is there somebody I want to raid that's on? Oh, Necky's on again. We should raid her again. We should raid Nekatija. I think uh, I like Nekatija. I would say Nekatija. We should raid her. We always raid her, but I don't care. She's been a good friend. Like, every time I drop in on her, she's always like, did you stream today? I'm like, no, I didn't stream today. <laughs> That's like, not every time I drop in on you am I streaming. <laughs> I mean, I'm not, be I'm not being mean. I'm. She's just sweet to ask every time. She always asks when I drop in. She goes, did you work on art? Did you stream? What did you work on today? And I'm like, oh, you're so, like, she's ridiculously nice to ask. Like, I will not go out and say, hey, I worked on art today. I might say, hey, I worked on some stuff. I like keeping it vague because, again, I don't like to be that guy that, um, that self promotes. I don't want to be a self promoter. So I, I, I talked about this earlier in another stream. I try to walk the very careful line of talking about what I'm doing without um, without boldly talking about so much that I'm self promoting. And finding the balance is tough for me. What? What on earth? Okay. She's away from a computer again. 
She's taking a little bit of a break, but we'll still raid her because she's always super. And plus, I got to take a photograph of it. I got to take a photograph of Baby Yoda anyway and post it on social media because I always feel like I'm scrambling after the fact to do that. And I don't want to do that. She's working on Humpty again. Yeah, she's been doing a great. Yeah, she's such a great. Isn't she wonderful? Isn't she great? Uh, you all are suggesting Neca because she's. She was the first person that I couldn't I couldn't not auto host because her content is so nice. Like she's always such a genuinely sweet person that it's hard not to be like, hey, I want to raid her. But she's always so wonderful that I there's no reason reason I can't raid her. <laughs> it's impossible for me not to raid her because she's just such a gentle soul, and she's such a talented artist on top of all that too. So it's not just about the. We go. Okay, so let's make sure it actually did that right. Perfect. Look at this. It didn't even need to rotate. So I got the hand, a little bit of the glove, the background. I have to fix the background. I'm not happy with the background yet. But it's almost done. So I just got to do the hand here. The a little bit more on this because I'm not pleased with the texture here. This needs to be textured. And then the background. Fix the background which I'm going to probably just put colorless blender on it, call it a day. And then maybe, maybe I'll throw on some, um, this needs to be darkened too, but I'll, I'll do that the next time. And then, um, yeah. So I, next time is going to be, next time is going to be the finishing time. There's too much to do. So let me post this on, I appreciate you guys' patience. I just want to be able to have all this ready. Plus I, I know Neki's away from her computer right now. So... I was kind of hoping Debbie would be on so I could raid her, but she usually doesn't stream at night. So I'm going to put Baby Yoda should be done next stream. Baby Yoda, Yofa, should be done next stream. Question mark. <laughs> no, exclamation point. Hype. His hype. <laughs> he almost put his hype. <laughs> Tweet. Good. So now I've got something I can actually give her to. Is Sarah on? Sarah? Oh, yeah, Sarah's painting is also on. I'd rather drop it on Neki. <laughs> Honestly, I'm, I do like Sarah, though. Sarah's painting is an also awesome channel. And what was funny was her dad streams, which I think is Sketch 1946. And I caught him in another channel that I follow. I'm like, I know you. I follow you. So I actually saw Sarah's dad, who's also a streamer at somebody else's stream. And I was like, how funny is it that I run into Sarah's dad randomly on another channel? <laughs> Um, which is hilariously good. I mean, I thought that was funny. Um, you know, usually that doesn't, I don't have, oh, she's back. Oh no, she put back soon. Don't do that to me. She probably saw, I think I saw her come on like enough to silence that. So we'll see. I'm going to unmute and see what's going on here. Okay. Oh, no, she's back. She's back. Good. Okay. Hopefully y'all can't hear her stream in my stream. I had to unmute her. Okay. So, guys, we are going to wrap this up here. Um, We're in a good stopping point. We're going to raid Nekatija or Nekati or how you say her name. I was calling her Neki because she's so awesome. Oh, no. Sarah's painting is awesome. Sarah's painting is another person. Um, She's super cool. You'd like her, too. She's very gentle. Um, she does beautiful artwork too, very realistic stuff. She was working on a cloud painting last I checked. I'll have to peek in on her after none ra uh, rating Neki just to see. But anyway, let me do. Let me go to my um, exit stream. Thanks, guys, for another amazing stream. I will be back Friday um, Friday at 9 to finish up Baby Yoda because I'm so close. Um, and we'll wrap it up there. So let me go ahead and get the raid started on Neck it because she's so amazing. Like I said, she's a great friend of the stream. I'm a friend of her stream. Um, and we will be. I gotta find my actual raid button. I will lurk on her while I wrap up for the evening. Guys, again, thank you so much for the wonderful thing. Thank you, Sarah, for the bits. Thanks for all the wonderful subscriptions. There were so many, I can't remember they were. I think Vance Christine and um oh um let me go back over them really quickly. I don't like not mentioning them by name. Thank you, Vance Christine. Thank you, Big, for the subscription on Prime. Thank you, The Small Blueberry, for um, the follow, and Craft and Canvas for the follow. Um, I thought one other person was subscribed. I know it was two. I thought it was three, but uh, it was probably two. But good night, everybody. We will see you in Neki's channel as soon as I get the stupid dashboard pulled up. <laughs> we will be there in 
moments. And where's the button? There it is. Raid channel. And I'll see you soon, guys.